Bespoke Radio for the Masses. Headline edition, July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. If the game is rigged, change the game. Game changer. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. This is Fade to Black with your host, Jimmy Church, on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. I need your help to get to the year 1985. Listening to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. Good evening, everyone. Fade to Black, Bespoke Radio for the masses. Today's Tuesday, December 1st. 335 days into the new year, just 30 days left. For KJCR on the Game Changer Network and KGRA The Planet, I'm your also humble host, Jimmy Church. What is cracking, everybody? Tonight, Michael Lee Hill, AMA. I'd like to welcome everybody listening all around the world, all across the United States. Hither and thither, to and fro, back and forth, up and down, east and west, north and south, far and near. This is Fade to Black. That's right. And tonight, it's day two. Day two of four straight AMA nights right here on Fade to Black. Tonight, it's Michael Lee Hill. He is back. Tomorrow night, Leo Zagami, live from Rome, Italy. Thursday night, it's going to be me. The call-in number, 323-825-5045. You can also Skype in, fade to black in the number 14. You can also tweet your questions for Michael at hashtag F2BQ. That's hashtag F2BQ. You can follow me on Twitter at J Church Radio. The action is with TweetDeck. You've got to get yourself some TweetDeck. It's automatic. It's amazing. TweetDeck will change your life. Your Twitterville. All right, let's go. Let's get the show cracking. It's going to be a great night tonight. The first time we had Michael on last month, we, uh, it was just one of those things. It was a two and a half hour straight conversation. Phone calls were coming in, but I didn't want to interrupt the flow of Michael and I that night. And, you know, in, in, in a weird way, I want to apologize for that. But the, but the other part of it is when you have a dynamic conversation like that, you just don't want to stop it. And that's it. So he's here tonight to take your questions. Had uh, phone calls coming in today into the studio about the show tonight and uh, people excited and wanted to know and so forth. I thought, wow, okay, here we go. It's going to be a great night. And uh, Mike has got Michael. I did. I just say Mike, Michael has got a lot of information to share and the best way to, to get at a brain like his is to ask him questions. And when I'm doing an interview and having a conversation, you know, I do what's on my mind and hopefully it's what's on your mind, but I can't do it for everybody. Can I? And that's why he is here tonight. AMA Q and a day two, Michael Lee Hill. All right. All week I've been announcing and last week too, our newest sponsor, life change T life change T it's changing my life. No joke. Got some blood purifiers that I'm doing right now. You can check out everything by clicking on the banners over at jimmychurchradio.com. Right there, it says it, getthetea.com, big green banner. Go click on it. Check out the product line. It's all good. It's amazing. Whew. That's super tea. I, I, <laughs> enough said. 
it is just amazing. So go check it out. Get the tea.com life change tea studio dome. Uh, we haven't worked up, uh, the uh, new fader, not Christmas special, and, uh, we will have it for next week. But in the meantime, the SBB deal is still going on. So there you go. Uh, commercials are still running. It's not going to change until Monday. Alien Snowfest, let's get that out of the way, too, as well. Thank you, everybody that has purchased your uh, weekend passes. I really appreciate it. It is going to be a very fun night, a uh, very fun weekend up there in Big Bear. Who was I was just speaking to somebody today about Alien Snowfest? Oh, Micah Hanks. Yeah, I was talking to Micah today. And uh, I don't know if he skis, but he's going to find out real soon. Uh, yeah, and he's totally fired up. He cannot wait to get out here. So there you go. It's going to be a great, great weekend. Um, Linda Walton House, Dan Friedman, George Nori, Jason Martell, Micah, Mike Barra, Chase Kletsky, Craig Campabasso, Marshall Klarfeld, and Richard Friggin Dolan. Okay, go and get your tickets now. Aliensnowfest.com. I will be hosting a luncheon. Yeah. Saturday, I'm going to host a luncheon. You want to get your tickets. It's going to be great. All right, let's get this show cracking. Let's get it going. Michael Lee Hill in here tonight. Unbelievable. And uh, so there you go. Let's get the show cracking. Today, Lincoln Park guitarist Brad Delson is 38. I remember the first time, you know, I had heard about Lincoln Park and and I saw you know, one of their first videos, you know, and I see the crowd <laughs> doing that thing. And I was like, man, these guys are pretty good. So there you go. Brad Delson at Lincoln Park. Doors drummer John Densmore is 71. And one of my favorites today, Emily Mortimer, is 44. She played Mackenzie McHale on HBO's The Newsroom. So that's who Emily Mortimer is. She's been in tons of movies and stuff, but I think she will always be Mackenzie McHale on The Newsroom. Also today, Sarah Silverman is 45. She had her moment in the sun. What happened to Sarah Silverman? You know, it's like she's she's nowhere now. I, I don't know. I, she was everywhere for a minute. Our dead guy's birthday today is moment of silence. Richard Pryor, 1940 to 2005, died at the age of 65. He is today currently listed at number one on Comedy Central's list of all-time greatest stand-up comedians. Pryor won an Emmy Award in 1973. He won five Grammy Awards, 1974, 75, 76, 81, and 82. In 1974, he also won two American Academy of Humor Awards and the Writers Guild of America Award, the first ever Kennedy Senator Mark Twain Prize for American Humor was presented to him in 1998. And of course, you know, the, the famous story, June 9th, 1980, after days and days of freebasing cocaine, Pryor poured 151 proof rum over his body and lit himself on fire. While ablaze, he ran down the street until being subdued by the police, and he was taken to a hospital, uh, Sherman Oaks, actually, Burn Center, where he was treated for burns covering more than half of his body. He spent six weeks in recovery. On December 10th, 2005, he suffered a fatal heart attack right here in Los Angeles. He was 65 years old. Probably the greatest stand-up comedian ever. Now, so let's light up Twitter. Let's do it now. Let's do it for Sir Richard Pryor. What's your favorite Pryor? What is it? Is it one of his comedy albums, comedy videos? Uh, is it a movie? So I went through and I compiled a list of some of my favorites, but... You have like his original stand up live and smoking. That was 1971, man. He was changing things. Silver Streak, Greased Lightning, Which Way Is Up, Blue Collar, Richard Pryor, Live in Concert. 
That was amazing. Holy Moses. Stir crazy. How about busting loose? How about the other? Richard Pryor live on the Sunset Strip wearing the red suit. Remember that? How about the toy? You know, and, and that is just a that is just a little tiny piece of of what he has done. Richard Pryor. What's your favorite? Yes, yeah, Sal just said stir crazy. That was pretty good. That was stir crazy. The one where he, he was, uh, uh, they were in jail in the opening scene. Was that that was stir crazy, wasn't it? Yeah, Richard Pryor, absolutely unbelievable. I, when I would listen to those albums, and I thought, man, nobody can do this. <laughs> nobody can do that. He would. He his albums had in the title on the cover of the albums was the N word, and I thought about that. And I was looking at that today, and I thought, man, nobody could do that today. You know, times have changed, and uh, uh, there was a lady today. Uh, before we get to the break, that was arrested for letting her four-year-old son play out in the playground of her apartment complex, which is a gated community, 120 feet away from the apartment. She was arrested. She was arrested because one of the neighbors called the police and said that there's a four-year-old kid out here alone and so forth. Well, anyway, and I, and I, and I talk about it all the time on the show. When I was four, when I was five, when I was six, I didn't see my mom all day <laughs> until the street lights came on first thing in the morning crack of dawn up downstairs bowl of cereal out the back door with my friends and got lost just went out and played all day i don't even know how we ate lunch i don't remember any of that i remember coming home at night <laughs> i mean yeah five years old you know, and, and, and times have changed, haven't they? I mean, yeah, my daughters knew, knew, no, 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 they, no. They weren't allowed to leave the house. You know, that was just, <laughs> you played in the bedroom with the door closed where I knew where you were. Yeah, times have changed, haven't they? They have changed. Follow us on Twitter at J Church Radio. That's what you want to do. Email. Now, if you need to get questions in for Michael tonight, we have hashtag uh, F2BQ. You can do that. You can also uh, send in questions via the website. There's a contact page. You can do that there. And also Jimmy at JimmyChurchRadio.com. Write Rita if you got a question. If you can't think of any other email, Rita at JimmyChurchRadio.com. All of that stuff will get sent in here to me. I want to get all of the questions I can in tonight for Michael. With that, let's take our first break, and I'll be back with all of the news that you know nothing about. This is Fade to Black, AMA Week, Night 2, Michael Lee Hill on the Game Changer Network and KGRA The Planet. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. This is Fade to Black. I'll be back right after this. Listening to Jimmy Church, Fade to Black. Fade to Black will now pause for alien identification. The station that talks the net, KGRA Radio. What's up, revolutionaries? It's me, Jimmy Church. Do you have an IRS or state tax issue? Well, I did, and I called national tax experts. My problems were fixed, done, fini, and man, I got to tell you, it was a relief. National tax experts are a recognized tax office that services clients in all 50 states. It doesn't matter where you live. Give them a call. I'm telling you, they take the time to understand each and every client's individual financial status as well as their financial goals. And that's exactly what you need, my brother, when you're taking on the evil three-letter. 
So, seriously, give them a call today at 1-877-909-5444. Again, 1-877-909-5444. Or go check out their website, www.nattaxexperts.com. That's N-A-T-T-A-X-E-X-P-E-R-T-S dot com. Tell them Jimmy sent you. Nine out of ten geneticists agree. Fade to Black is not your father's radio show on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the planet. Hi, this is Chase Kletsky with Fate Magazine Radio, and you're listening to Jimmy Church and Fade to Black on the Game Changer Network and the KGRA digital broadcast station, where the Fader Knots rock. Hi, this is Rob Reiner from Anvil, and you're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. What's up? I'm Chris. What up? This Mass is Tom and you're listening, listening to Jimmy Church Radio. Welcome back to Fade to Black. Tonight, it is day two of four straight AMA nights right here on Fade to Black. Our guest tonight is Michael Lee Hill. He's got some Anunnaki blood. Been filming those orbs over Lake Erie. It's going to be a great show. Tomorrow night, Leo Zagami right here live from Rome, Italy. Thursday night, it's going to be me. The call-in number is 323-825-5045. And, uh, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. You can also Skype in Fade to Black in the number 14. And let's try to keep everything to questions. The uh, the shorter your phone call, I mean, stories are great. And if it's relevant to the question that you're asking, I get that too. And I don't want to disrespect anybody. And I've never cut anybody off of a phone call. But um, uh, the I just want to get as many calls in as we can. Okay. Last night, I don't know what, what you know, we probably did uh, 40, 50 phone calls last night. We could have done 60 if you think about it. Okay. So there you go. All right. Let's do this. On this day in history, 1959, Antarctica was made. A military-free continent, allegedly. Fader fact. This is crazy. Somebody needs to vet this. Somebody needs to confirm this one. Thomas Edison's last breath is contained in a test tube in Michigan. Fader fact. All right, let's get to the news that you know nothing about. I don't wanna I don't wanna make light of anything, but just listen to this. Putin says. Turkey shot down the plane to protect the oil trade with ISIS. Turkey says, prove it. Turkey says Putin is avoiding ISIS and bombing everything else. Putin says, prove it. Turkey's president, Erdogan, says he'll resign if Moscow proves it. (laughs) And... And then he turns around and asks Putin to do the same thing. But Putin says nothing. And I just gots to say, you thought Richard Pryor was funny? That is comedy. And that's how they're playing international diplomacy right now. Friggin' joke. An unsettling mystery has washed up on Japan's shores. Over the past two months, at least 12 wooden boats, big boats, have been found in the Sea of Japan on or near the coast carrying dead bodies, decaying bodies. Yes, all the bodies were partially skeletonized. Two were found without heads, and one boat contained six skulls. The first boat was found in October, Then a series of boats were found this past month in November. Coast Guard officials in Japan are trying to unravel the riddle of where these 
ghostly, ghastly boats are coming from and what happened to those on board. Right now they're thinking North Korea. It's bizarre. It is a bizarre, bizarre set. Not one person alive. And they've been out there for a long time if they're skeletonized. Netflix is doing it big. Netflix is reportedly working on a reboot of Lost in Space. That's right. The classic sci-fi series ran for three seasons starting in 1965. And let's just hope it's as good as the OG version. I went back, uh, it was last year. You have to ask Rita because I kept her up late at night. I went back last year and I watched every episode of Lost in Space in order. Man, love that show. Facebook's Mark Zuckerberg and his wife, Priscilla Chan, plan to give up 99% of their Facebook fortune. They're going to give it all to charity over the course of their lives via a new foundation. Zuckerberg announced everything hours ago in a letter embedded in a post commemorating the birth of the couple's first child. And so, you know, I was thinking about this. So you have, what would I do if I had, you know, let's pull a round number out, $25 billion. I would, A, continue to do this show. That's the first thing. The second thing, I think I'd give it all away. i give it all away. Keep, you know, stash stash 100 million back so I could live, you know, nicely until I'm, I die. But I would give the, I would continue to do this show. But when I gave it away, I would be right there where I gave it away to, to make sure that it was doing what it was supposed to do. But I would give it all away. I would, I, you know, leave it, leave a, a million to a kid, you know, one, one of, you know, I have two daughters, million each there and, and whatever, you know, just make sure they're, they're fine, but I would give it all away. I would, I'd give it all away in the right places. The Chinese scientists, are you ready? The Chinese scientist behind the world's biggest cloning factory says he has technology advanced enough to replicate humans and is only holding it off for fear of public reaction. The company, Boya Life Group, and its partners are building a giant plant in the northern Chinese port of Tianjin, which is due to go into production within the next seven months and aims for an output of, check this, one million cloned cows a year by 2020. And that is my scary news of the day. That's just frightening. Frightening. Keep that meat over there. I, I, I don't need me any clown, 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 cloned burgers. I like my, my in and out safe. The national security letter, it's called the NSL. It's a potent surveillance tool. You can check out what the letter looks like over on our Facebook page, Jimmy Church Radio. It allows the government to acquire a wide swath of private information, all without a warrant. Federal investigators issue tens of thousands of them each year to banks, ISPs, car dealers, insurance companies, doctors, you name it. The letters don't need a judge's signature and come with a gag to the recipient, forbidding the disclosure of the NSL to the public or to the target. For the first time, as part of the First Amendment lawsuit, a federal judge ordered the release of what the FBI was seeking from a small ISP as part of a national security letter, among other things. Now, I've got over on our Facebook page, I've got the redacted version, a semi-redacted version, an even lesser redacted version, and then the whole letter. It's right there. You can go check it out on our Facebook page, Jimmy Church Radio. All right. Among other things, the FBI was demanding the target's complete web browsing history, IP addresses of everyone a person has corresponded with, and the records of all online purchases. 
And this is according to a court document unveiled yesterday. All that's required is an agent's signature denoting that the information is relevant to an investigation. That's it, and they can go and peel everything off. Forget about what the NSA is doing. This is frightening. Go check it out. Google the National Security Letter, NSL. It's going to freak you out. This is what we storm Washington over right there. Talk about a conspiracy. That is, you know, uh, the definition of conspiracy, you know, more than one person to commit a crime. That is a conspiracy. Thousands of stone structures that form geometric patterns in the Middle East are coming into clearer view, with archaeologists finding two wheel-shaped patterns that date back 8,500 years. This is in Jordan. Now, that makes these wheels older than the Nazca lines. And some of these designs are located, like I said, in, in Jordan, on the Azraq Oasis. They seem to have astronomical significance built to align with the sunrise on the winter solstice. Those are just some of the findings of the new research of the Middle East lines, which were first encountered by pilots during World War I. RAF Flight Lieutenant Percy Maitland published an account of them in 1927 in the journal Science. Check it out. Pictures over on our Facebook page. Canadian Developers are planning to send a satellite into low Earth orbit with a specialist camera and radiation detecting equipment in a bid to capture the world's first ever conclusive video footage of an alien craft. They're trying to see if the real truth is out there. They're crowdsourcing right now on Indiegogo. The project is appealing for funds of only $50,000 to, to develop and launch the CubeSat for disclosure. We know that the NSA and other space agencies have the ability to detect and, and see and find and tell us about aliens. They're constantly going to blue screen on their live International Space Station feeds. There's stuff out there. They know it, but they just don't want to let us know officially. But what if this detection goes private? Look out. Think about it. If we have control of our own satellite and its own camera and radiation detecting, think about that for a second. That is a game changer. And this is Fade to Black. It's our day two of our AMA week right here on Fade to Black. Tonight's guest, Michael Lee Hill. Tomorrow night, Leo Zagami. The phones are going to be jammed. If you call, don't just recall, call, 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 redial. I will get everybody in just like I did last night. It's going to be a great show. Let's do this. I'm your host, Jimmy Church, back right after this. This is Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. The station that talks the net, KGRA Radio. Hello, I'm Katini, and you're listening to my main man, Jimmy Church, on JimmyChurchRadio.com. Hi, this is Ray Sobbs here, repping the planet, and you're listening to my good friend, Jimmy Church, Fade to Black, on the Game Changer Network and the KGRA Digital Broadcast Station. People love to shop. What if you could shop and it was actually good for you? What if you could actually purchase items that bettered your life? What goes into your body is important to what quality of life you have. How about shopping for items that better your health? GetTheTea.com is that shopping place. We're not only tea, even though that's our number one seller, we are about helping your health. There's Colostrum LD for those of you with autoimmune troubles. The product helps your stomach get on track. GI problems produce pain. Get relief with Colostrum 
from LD? How about some fat burners? Or maybe some joint aid? Or a power cleanse? There's so much to tell you with very little time. So get help health-wise at GetTheT.com. That's GetTheT.com. Or you can call our friendly operators at 928-308-0408. That's 928-308-0408. Get help and relief by going shopping. Shop at GetTheT.com. That's GetTheT.com. Serving people with great products for over eight years. GetTheT.com. Imagine no longer being tied down to your computer, but having the freedom to take live talk radio with you anywhere you go. TalkStream Live introduces our first ever iPhone application. The talk shows you follow now follow you. And your iPhone is now the fastest and easiest way to stay connected to the best talk radio on the Internet. Let TalkStream Live transform the way you listen to radio. Listen to live talk shows 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Mobile talk radio from TalkStream Live. Now available in the iTunes App Store. This is Toby Kebble. You're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. Don't hurt me, Jimmy. I'm only little. Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And this is Ari Gold. We're the Honey Brothers. <laughs> We're of the Honey Brothers. Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And I'm Ari Gold. We're the Honey Brothers. And you're listening to Jimmy Church. The Revolution. All right, you fader not. Studio Dome has done it once again. A new Studio Dome fader not special. Introducing the Studio Dome Boom Box Bluetooth Speaker. It's got a rear-firing base film subwoofer and dual 52-millimeter main speakers. You'll never listen to your tablet or cell phone speakers again. Just click on the Studio Dome banner, use the promo code JIMMY, and you'll get the SBB for 49 bucks and free shipping. And get a Buddy 4-port USB charger for free. That's a $19.99 value right there. And they'll throw in a Buddy in the box. It's the best deal on the net anywhere just go to jimmychurchradio.com click on the studio dome banner enter the promo code jimmy go back lee Tappy. this is micah hanks of the graylian report and you're listening to jimmy church on fade to black across the globe on the game changer radio network and the one and only kgra radio the planet <laughs> Welcome back, Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. What is cracking, everybody? Tonight is day two of four straight AMA nights right here on Fade to Black. Tonight's guest, Michael Lee Hill. Tomorrow night, Leo Zagami, live from Rome, Italy. Thursday, it's going to be me. That uh, uh, I'm almost nervous. I'm opening up the phone lines right now, 323-825-5045. 323-825-5045. Phone lines are open. You can also Skype in, fade to black in the number 14. If you want to, if you can't call in, and you want to send in an email question, you can do that three different ways. You can do it through the website, and uh, you can do that in confidence if you want. There's a contact form there. You can email me, jimmy at jimmychurchradio.com. You can also email Rita, rita at jimmychurchradio.com. Another way to post is on Twitter, hashtag F2BQ. That's fade to black questions. There's already a bunch of questions lined up. That column in TweetDeck is live to my left, and it's only me. So I see all of the questions when they come in. So there's a variety of ways to do this AMA tonight. Okay, there you go. Phone lines are open, 323-825-5045. You get a busy signal. If you don't get put on hold, uh, we'll get everybody in. Just keep calling, all right? Let's do this. Michael Lee Hill is an award-winning musician, filmographer, and UFO experiencer. In his home state of Ohio, Michael has been uh, cataloging video after video of UFOs over Lake Erie. 
Michael's Lake Erie UFO footage has been featured on the Discovery Channel, Fox News, MSNBC, CBS News, Coast to Coast AM, Rents.com, here, HBCCUFO.org, and in the feature film, UFOs Unplugged with Dan Aykroyd and David Serrata's From Here to Andromeda, and also the History Channel's UFO Hunters. His website is MichaelLeeHill.net. I would like to welcome back to Fade to Black, Michael Lee Hill. Michael, good evening, sir. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. How are you doing, Jimmy? I am doing fantastic. It's great to have you back on the show. And I, I look back to our conversation that we had last month, and I, I was talking about it in the intro of the show. Uh, it was a two-and-a-half-hour dynamic conversation that I didn't want to interrupt with phone calls. And I feel bad because this is a you know, it's a interactive show. We, we we you know with Twitter and email and phone calls, and it's it's real time audience per- participation and something that I enjoy. But sometimes I just don't want to interrupt the conversation, and that's what we did last time. And we had to get you back for AMA week just so we could do questions uh, with the audience. And I want to thank you for that. Well, I'm excited to be here, and uh, this is the first time I've ever done a whole show like this that is just questions and answers, and uh, man, I'm excited about it because this is my favorite way uh, to do stuff. I, You know, just talking about your stuff, yourself kind of is boring, you know, <laughs> and uh, so for just doing this, this is fantastic. I'm really looking forward to it. You know, and you have, uh, I like the way that you interact with everybody. You you leave yourself very open to, uh, you know, to social media, not only on Twitter and Facebook, but you uh, interact with, uh, you have a very, very large uh, active social media uh, life. And, and how does that go for you? Do you, do you get contacted a lot? From, yeah, from- yeah. But you know what? As much as possible, I try to give every single person that asks me something or I'm an open book as far as I'm concerned. And uh, I try to give everyone as much time as I possibly can. And, uh, it, you know, it gets a little strange, though, because at some of these conferences afterwards, there's large groups of people now that are like waiting there to talk to me. And I feel bad because I know I can't talk to everyone. It's just not even physically possible. But you know what? People seem to be <clears throat> the kind of people that are starting to form around me. They seem to be of the frequency that they're very respectful. They see someone waiting behind them. So they introduce themselves and ask something. And then, you know, we spend as much time as possible. That seems like we did what needed to be done. And then they move along and I, I say hello to the next person. But, uh, you know, being, you being a musician, you've met people that you looked up to and, Man, if they're an asshole, doesn't that just blow your day? Yeah, you know? yeah, completely. <laughs> I figure, you know, if that's the least we can do, if uh, if this is truly about being in service to self or service to others, one of the best things that we can do for one another is to listen. Right, exactly right. And yeah. the too many, uh, I said this last week, actually, too many people talk. Not enough people listened. And there's a difference there. It's okay to speak, but you don't learn if your jaw's flapping and you want to be the know-it-all. You have to listen. And then then you learn. And there's a difference between the two, isn't there? Absolutely, yeah. More will be learned in silence than ever cabin away, you know? Right, 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 right. Um, I've got uh, uh, a couple of uh, questions that I want to lead off with here. Um, the phone lines are open, by the way, 323-825-5045, 323-825-5045. Uh, first question is from Renee, and she says, Michael, in your opinion, Why haven't larger numbers of people come forward with their own sightings of orbs over Lake Erie? Well, actually, they have. Uh, You know, it got to the point where this activity was showing up so much over Lake Erie that they showed up 10 days in a row. And, you know, hundreds of people were going down to the lake and experiencing the same phenomenon. And, uh, uh, but why aren't they reporting it? In this case, a lot of people did come forward like, hey, we're all seeing this, you know, and that's a beautiful thing. But, 
this whole subject has been put into such so much ridicule and you know every time that a story is done they have the x-files music playing behind the segment you know and right. it's just it's not taken seriously so i think people are because of the stigma that's been put onto the subject by the media and it's on purpose because they uh they're scared to death of the subject we can get into why that is but uh well yeah well why is that well, I can tell you because of my own involvement on in all this, you know, I was pulled into a secret meeting with the elite and they said, we want to tell you why this subject has been withheld from the masses for the last 25 years, <clears throat> including your Spike TV show, they told me, because in 2012, I had given Spike TV about eight months of my life and, you know, they had done a mind-blowing job in putting a new show together that went over everything that happened in my life like some of the even previous uh like abduction experiences they had recreated with you know i got to meet the, the young michael lee hill actor you know it was pretty mind-blowing but with all this i went to new york and i was had a lie detector test administered by the chief of police uh, for the New York Police Department. He was waiting there with a polygraph test. When I got to New York, didn't know anything about it, but I passed it with flying colors. I was regressed by a professional hypnotist, uh, psychologist. <clears throat> and uh, this all ended up being a fantastic show, but right before it was supposed to air, um, and this gets into an uh, interesting thing, but you know, because of some work I did behind the scenes to try to help humanity during the end of 2012, uh, everything, everyone thinks that it was such a non-event. They have no idea what was happening behind the scenes to try to prevent some of these doom and gloom ending of the story prophecies. But anyhow... Uh, the last moment before it was supposed to air, word came down from Viacom that they weren't allowed to air it. And uh, so this group that had pulled me into this meeting, there's about like six, I think it was six to eight individuals. Now I'm trying to picture it in my mind. It was like, a, like this, like a Skype video call. <clears throat> and they said, what we want to talk to you about is, first of all, we're the people who have been in charge of releasing this information to the public forever. You know, in all the time that we can think of through history, we are the people who have been deciding what gets released to humanity regarding the extraterrestrial subject. And here you are with your YouTube channel of over 4.5 million views and your History Channel show, and you're saying whatever you want. We're not even brought into the loop to ask us what we think. And uh, they said that I've pissed off a lot of people behind the scenes uh, because even on a spiritual level, man, it's, if it's your life, they could try to scare you to saying that you're, you can't talk about what happened to you last month. I say, fuck that. Excuse my language. Right. This is my life, man. This is, they have no say so. And as long as I stick to, man, this is what happened. This is, I'm being as truthful as I can about true events that happened. And if anyone has a problem with that, I really don't care because obviously we've not been told the truth anyhow about our even human history, you know, and so much is about to be revealed. But pretty much they said, we want to tell you why the subject has been withheld. And it deals with if you allow the reality that extraterrestrials are real out into the media and out into the mass consciousness well the next logical question is well how are they getting here from point a to P point b and that gets to their propulsion systems and it eventually will lead you to free energy and they said that uh you don't even need alien extraterrestrial intervention to achieve free energy there's been many really brilliant humans that on their own has figured it out like nikolai tesla right um <clears throat> They said there's many, it's going to happen anyhow, but they said right now, what do you think that an ISIS member would do with their unlimited free energy? Let's get, yeah, exactly, exactly. I'm reading all of these questions that we've got coming in here. So let's go to, this is from Corey Holman. Corey says, Michael, what is the real reason for all of the global climate engineering? Is it Nibiru related or is it breakaway civilization hybrid terraforming related? I think it's the first. Um, 
when you find out we are going through uh, solar activity that's never even been heard of. In 2012, it was just re- revealed recently by NASA that there was a huge solar event that if it would have been facing our direction, it would have been a doomsday event. It would have wiped off all life on the planet, and it would have boiled the oceans right off the, this planet. The only reason we survived is because it, it let off facing the other way. I want to tell you that this work I did with the NSA uh, remote viewers group, and this was in 2012, uh, we were actually – working on this of trying they were telling us at that point in 2012 about all this increased solar activity so we were working telepathically with the Anunnaki and trying to make sure that none of these events were faced towards the planet and I had no confirmation of any of this until NASA actually released it I think in 2014 Um, but uh, how they would help their own planet you know, uh, be protected from the solar radiation and stuff when they pass through our part of the solar system was to take gold and and powderize it and mix it with other elements and then put that up into the atmosphere and it would act as a shield to protect the planet from the increased solar activity. Well, I think right there you have a brand new explanation for chemtrails. But I understand there's a really some negative shit in chemtrails as well um but i think it's like a hybridization of trying to figure out what they did for nibiru and it did involve gold and putting gold in a powderized form up into the atmosphere um so i think it has everything to do with nibiru and um the work that was done was trying to make this a survivable event for humanity. I'm talking about the passage of nibiru through our solar system which i did hear by the way you know, I hate. I don't like putting out dates, but I'm. I'll be surprised if it doesn't become visible in our skies very soon. I'll just leave it at that. Michael, in your opinion, uh, let me see here. I'm. I'm I've, I've got a whole list of stuff here. Let's see. Uh, right on. Just, it's, uh, blah, 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 blah. This is what fun. does. Yes. <laughs> what does Michael know about the Labyrinth Group? <laughs> I know. Probably more so than most people on the planet. Um, They've been so integral in my own unfolding of this and and my relationship with A.R. Borden because he was the head of the Labyrinth Group. Um, Both positive and negative, I got to say. I mean, early on, if they want to know what's in your blood, they find out. They sent uh, an agent into my life posing to be a girlfriend she ended up taking a blood sample from me i mean they're serious about this stuff which was very uh abrasive to me like for the first time all this it wasn't so fun anymore i'm like what the fuck right you know? right well you gotta watch the f-bombs mike oh i'm we, so we, sorry we, yeah we have kids listening to this uh, yeah show. right on i'm yeah, sorry yeah. I will. Even, hey hey passion is passion <laughs> is part of it um right on but, i'm uh, sorry <laughs> who who is the labyrinth group well you Take the NSA. We all know what the NSA does. But above the NSA is like secretive divisions that deal with the military industrial complex, research and development, you know, these uh, groups that are truly looking into reverse engineering extraterrestrial subjects. Um, And then above that is the actual part of these secret groups that are called the Alien Contact Interface Organization, and that's the ACIO, and that's the group that, like, Philip Corso, when he was getting his reverse engineered technology that he would then disseminate into the mass population, he went to the ACIO. They're the ones that, for our powers that be, or powers that were, I like to think of them, because... Anyhow, uh, that's the ACIO, but the most secretive division of the ACIO is the Labyrinth Group. And the Labyrinth Group is where A.R. Borden told me that's where extraterrestrials are now involved. Every step below that is just uh, us humans. The Labyrinth Group is where there's actual extraterrestrials that are on the surface in uh, secret bases working on technology transfer programs with our elite right now are they in contact with you yes when was the last time you communicated with the labyrinth group 
it's constant now because they are the Anunnaki and it's multidimensional. So when you start to realize communication is not what we think, it can come through anything and anyone. And that's interesting. What, what, okay, so if it happens all the time, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you want to keep it private. That's up to you. But what was the last communication that you had? Can you share that with us? Um, yeah, it happened yesterday, actually. And that is, you know, A.R. Borden's wish of all of this. And A.R. Borden was the head of the Labyrinth Group. Um, and as far as extraterrestrials that came here, he was the president of the planet. You know, the person that actually was a quantum physicist and started to understand life physics of light and sound, that's who an extraterrestrial is going to want to talk to. It's not going to be Putin or Obama. I hate to say that. Right. But, you know, or Tesla or whatever, you know. Um, so A.R. Borden was that individual. Uh, and, and, and what did he say to you yesterday? Well, it wasn't him specifically. What it was in 2012... This, what happened is I received an invitation to be a ground floor member in a group called, that they called the Linkage Institute. And uh, by the way, this is really cool that we can get into this because everyone, go check out on Facebook. We've actually just launched what we're talking about for real, the Linkage Institute group on Facebook. Um, it was AR's wishes to, you know, they said that they've been going to an extraterrestrial conference of sorts that wasn't on this surface. It was on a mothership, an Anunnaki mothership. And it's where many races of extraterrestrials would meet and they would talk about things that were coming up in the near future for Earth and what, you know, they would think tank it. And um, this conference was called The Link. So the whole idea of the Linkage Institute was to increase the human amount of people sitting at that table. And um, it said what it deals with is a lot of your listeners will be familiar with the hundredth monkey. If not, just go look into the hundredth monkey and you'll find out it's just scientific proof that once a new thought form, maybe it's a new way of looking at a problem, exceeds a certain threshold, it, it gets put through the whole mass consciousness. Right. And uh, the hundredth monkey... Uh, puts it at 7%. Well, they told me they know it's only 3%. It only takes 3% of us resonating at a new higher frequency that's more love-based and more uh, beneficial for the whole. It only takes 3% of us until that new way of looking at information will spread throughout the whole mass consciousness. And we've been told that none of us, what could we do to fight this system? You know, what power does I, I have as this little individual in this big machine more than they have ever let you believe? It doesn't take many of us who start going, you know what, there's a better way that we could be living and it's not this. It doesn't take many of us to start resonating in those higher frequencies before it will spread. And it's, it's there now. It's only 3%. But the Linkage Institute was... A.R. Borden, the head of the Labyrinth Group, it was his wish to present a teaching platform that would talk about exactly what we're talking about now and put this information out to the world in a responsible manner that just the facts, ma'am, you know? Right. And uh, so it's live and it just went, you know... I took a couple of years because I was an initial ground floor member of the Linkage Institute. But how I want to tell you how this re relates to AR board and communication yesterday is very recently I got an email telling me that uh, I got a new Twitter follower and his holiness, the Dalai Lama, is now following me on Twitter. And I was like, oh, my God. You know, first of all, I'm going to have to think about what I'm posting on Facebook. Right. But the thing that shocked me is that introduction letter to me of asking me if I wanted to join this group that was being created to meet the extraterrestrials when first contact happens. Uh, uh, the Dalai Lama was on that list. So, you know, in my mind, the only connection I could see that why I received the message that the Dalai Lama was following me is he was on the same list of invitees into the Linkage Institute that A.R. Borden was hand-selected. How this all comes about, there was huge confirmation for me as I'm listening to Chief Golden Light Eagle last night. He did one of, he doesn't do many radio interviews, but he did one last night. And he goes on to tell me that 
he's a part of a secret behind the scenes group that's been formed to uh, meet the extraterrestrials when we have first contact. First of all, you you know my relationship with Chief Gold and Light Eagle. Mm-hmm. Um, but he said we got some really prominent members in this group, and uh, he had named Bob Dean, which Bob Dean has been really signif- significant in my life, and I met him in 2009, and a lot of my friends know I had a really person-to-person, really strange thing that, you know, he walked up to me while in the middle of the conference, and he put his hand over my heart, and he announced to everyone around me, he said, this is a very special young man right here. And I was thinking, well, what the hell is going on? Right. But anyhow, uh, what Chief Golden Light Eagle said is this group had Bob Dean in it, and he had, they had the, the Dalai Lama. That confirmation only came to me yesterday of this group that I was invited to into by A.R. Borden. I consider that a cosmic wink of a confirmation from spirit of things that really these things went like started to come into manifestation years ago. Interesting. So, and uh, are you going to reach back out to the Dalai Lama? I don't even know how to do that. Yeah, you know well, what I mean? I mean, I have his email address, but uh, I mean, I'm not going to dry email the Dalai Lama. Hey, Dalai Lama. I, I, you, you know, know? Well, uh, you know I, it would be, be pretty trippy to uh, direct message, you know, the Dalai Lama himself well, on I can Twitter. Tell you, Jimmy, you know, that's pretty, that's pretty trippy. What's really cool about all this anyhow is I've, I've revealed our – Ready? I know I'm Inky here. Inky's messenger, let's call it, because I'm not Inky Anunnaki. Inky, 16 feet tall. I'm my higher self is Inky, and I'm here wearing these human clothes. And I've been put under the veil just like anyone else. Uh, but uh, Inky has another title. Like everyone knows in Samaria, when he was the water bearer, and when he was depicted uh, as. Uh, Inky, he had water coming out of his shoulders or erupting out of his shoulders, or he was carrying pitchers or buckets of water. And water represented the, flower, the, the waters of life. It was like divine wisdom. It was the stuff, you know? And um, first of all, that's Aquarius then, because Aquarius is the man holding the buckets of water. But in Tibet, you find out that there was this reincarnating monk there, and the, the Dalai Lama had given him the title of Maitreya, because Maitreya in Tibetan means loving kindness. And um, just the way the Dalai Lama is a reincarnating intelligence over and over and over again, um, and it's really interesting, I'm sure a lot of your followers know how the Dalai Lama is like they they pick the child because the child will be be able to remember past life objects you know it's mind blowing but it's the same way with the Maitreya of and this this monk was did some really great things in the Tibetan culture and how they know him is when he was first of all I want to tell you this this being When they depict him in uh, Tibet, he's got water erupting from his shoulders. It's inky. Um, But over there, he was given the title loving kindness by the Dalai Lama. And when these incarnations of the Maitreya were there, once he passed away and they would, um, what's that called when they burn your body? Cremation. Right. When, when they would cremate the body, they would leave bega- behind, they called it rinksel or religious relics, and it would be like hundreds of pounds of crystal that took the form of little roses or pearls. And uh, Tibetans would go hundreds of miles just to go to a, uh, a Tibetan temple where there was a set of this rinksel. Well, this rinksel has all come together now because it's going into a museum and it'll be there forever. But um, uh, I am the Maitreya. I am Inky's human messenger here. It it is the water bearer, and I I I've been I knew about the Maitreya stuff probably five years ago. The universe kept bringing me this. Like you're going to need to know this is people are going to recognize you by these names. Well, let's see, let, let's uh, we we got to jump in and take a break right there. It's a good spot to do it. Right this, is, this is Fade to Black. Tonight, second night of our AMA week. Tonight, our guest is Michael Lee Hill. I have got a pile of questions, and the phone lines are open. 323-825-5045. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. We'll be back 
with Michael Lee Hill right after this. Way out here, we listen to Jimmy Church. You're listening to Fade to Black. Always on the edge of the hottest alternative talk, Jimmy Church with Fade to Black. KGRARadio.com ¿Qué tal mis amigos? Yo soy Mario Carson, el tiburón, y los invito para que escuchen a mi buen amigo Jimmy Church Radio. ¡Claro que sí! Ray Sobs here once again to tell you about the Space and Alien Snowfest Ufology Conference taking place in the ski resort city of Big Bear Lake in sunny Southern California. What a lineup. Richard Dolan, Chase Kletsky, Micah Hanks, George Norrie, Jason Martell, Jimmy Church, Linda Moulton Howe, keynote speaker Stanton Friedman, and more. Along with the speakers and lecturers, join the luncheon hosted by Jimmy Church. See a world-class UFO ET-themed ice sculpture conference contest with attendees voting the winner. Enjoy the quaint shops, restaurants, and pubs in Big Bear Lake Village, and enjoy some of the best sky watching you can imagine. After the hectic holidays, gift yourself with a retreat the first week of February, and come relax with us in a premier ski resort town high in the mountains of the Southern Sierras, with an average of over 300 sunny days a year. Take advantage and book your lodging early and get your tickets now. Visit our website and register at aliensnowfest.com. That's aliensnowfest.com. Did you ever turn to your radio for your favorite talk show to find that it's been preempted for this? In the air, a deep right center. Back goes Lewis to the wall, and it's all here! Or this? And I'm ashamed of you, Hillary, for voting for it. Do you have a favorite talk radio program that's not available in your city? Just go to TalkStreamLive.com for links to the best streaming talk radio shows. At TalkStream Live, you will find live talk shows 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. All your favorites are here. With such a large selection, you will also discover some new favorites. On the go and still want to listen? With the mobile smartphone, simply type TalkStream Live on your internet browser. Now you can take internet radio with with you. You will also find hundreds of music, news, and sports streams. Best of all, the TalkStream Live directory is free and there's never a login required. Remember TalkStreamLive.com, the fastest route between you and your favorite talk radio show. You are listening to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. Oi, oi, I'm Rhys Evans. You're listening to Jimmy Church. This is Revolution. The Revolution will not be televised. The Revolution is on radio. Ciao. Welcome back to Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Tonight is day two of four straight AMA nights right here on Fade to Black. Our guest tonight is Michael Lee Hill. Tomorrow night, Leo Zagami. Thursday, yours truly. Let's go straight to the phones. And Michael, hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Say hi to Michael Lee Hill. You're live right now. Okay, so much. Come on back. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> and uh, let's just let's go right back to the phones. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Say hi to Michael Lee Hill. Michael. Hello. <laughs> it's Katya. Well, hi. <laughs> hi, it's sweetie. Awesome how that you doing? You were the first caller. How perfect is that? <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Jimmy, I got to tell so you something about on Katya. Uh, when I went to the first Star Knowledge Conference, I had some energy work done by a Shinto priest. His name was Hideo. And I've heard when you come in contact with someone that has Christ consciousness, yes. it'll bring you to your knees. And it did. I cried all day. And it wasn't 
any tears of pain or anything. It was, I don't know what happened, but I mean, I was a mess. And uh, it was Katya that like, uh, you know, I, it seems like we just knew each other forever. And man, she really took care of me. It's like, oh, I know what you're going through. It's, you, you just got some good energy, you know? Yeah, and, well, uh, he opened your heart, you know? That's what it was. Yeah, it was profound. <laughs> So well, how- I, I, I was sitting in the front row, you know, of the seven grandmothers panel, and Michael's standing in the back. I'm like, come on, come on up front, you know, and he comes and sits next to me, and he's like, oh, I would have never sat up front if you hadn't told me to. I said, Michael, this is how you get the straight A's. You got to yeah, sit in the front right. row. <laughs> I'm the shy guy, man. I've always, I'm more of a Keith than a Mick, you know what I'm saying, Jimmy? Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, Michael, come on, sit next to me. And he sat next to me, and he just, oh, my God, Jimmy, my heart just went out to him. He was just flooded with tears, and I'm sitting here next to him, patting him, going, it's okay, Michael, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and we've just been great friends ever since. You know, it's tears of joy because, man, people have no idea of the beautiful things that are in store for humanity. Right. And it's going to come through. I, I like the, the idea of the revolution will be indigenized. It's truly starting to understand oh, who the Native American Indians are and the wisdom that they have and are willing to still share with us after the genocide that was committed against them. These are the most loving people oh, yeah. on the planet, and they're so open right now to sharing 10,000 years of oral history and 5,000 years of written history of their own contact with these star visitors. And they're doing it in December at the Star Knowledge Conference in Estes Park, Colorado. They've been doing it for 20 years. Um, So it, it does bring me to tears. And what I was experiencing the first time I gathered with them is what Katya is talking about. I was a mess. A spiritual mess. (laughs) Well, one of the things that I enjoy um, is when you go to conferences, the the people that attend a conference are there because they want to be there. So there isn't there isn't a whole lot of negative vibe. Nobody shows up that doesn't want to be there. If you know what I'm saying. Oh no, no. You know what I mean? Yeah, Yeah, I mean it's just not even. It's like almost like the negative energy gets uh, you know dispelled or absorbed. (laughs) You're just transmuted. You know? Yeah, absolutely. And and that's why I enjoy going to conferences because you get to. Not only uh, you know hear other people's experiences and their stories, but you participate in the vibe. The vibe is gnarly fun, and I just totally dig it. Right. And, uh, well, it, and just being around all the chiefs. I mean, for me, that was what really struck me was the elders because there is such wisdom just in their presence that. I mean, I was in tears, too, you know, at different points and for different reasons. It was just, you know, being there with him, I was so happy and grateful, you know? Yes, yes. I mean, that's... Well, okay, so Katya, this is an AMA. Thank you for calling in, but okay. but this is what yeah. I want you to do. I know you have a question for Michael, but since since you got the inside track, you know exactly yeah. where to go. So I'm I'm curious, what's your question tonight for Michael? Okay, well, it's not really a question, it's more a reminder, <laughs> because every time we talk, because, you know, when Michael and I talk on the phone, we'll be on there for at least an hour, and I, I said, you know, Michael, you've got to stress the point that when people are talking about the Nephilim and they're talking about the Anunnaki, they aren't really acknowledging the split in Enlil's line and in Inky's line, and in Marduk's, really, that's what we're dealing with now. This is what he told me the other day. In Marduk's line, because they want to not, they want to lump all of the Nephilim into Enlil's, which is Zeus, um, and all of the, you know, negative, you know, New World Order stuff coming out of that, and they're not acknowledging Inky's line, which are the Native Americans, because yeah. they do, people just don't know the difference. And so maybe I think you should explain that. Well, I think that's uh, the biggest thing that, you know, I'm, 
I've been very upset lately just with a lot of researchers who seem to be throwing the Anunnaki and the Nephilim under the bus, so to speak, and throwing the whole subject into a very fearful manner and saying that they're the ones truly behind the oil and banking families and, uh, you know, the New World Order and the elitists and uh, the people who are keeping humanity in the stranglehold of the slavery system that, you know, that we're in, economic slavery system um well you know i don't want to interrupt your answer but i want i want you to expand on that a little bit because it seems that it is for somebody that doesn't have direct contact or direct Mm -hmm. research that it is uh, a controversial and an easy way to go to a have an argument or b cause ripples in the water yeah that's why i think what i'm bringing to the table is so important because it gets through opinion this is scientific fact and it comes in the form of brand new dna uh revelations that come in the form of what's called haplogroup x2a and haplogroups are how scientists can with new dna technology they can work back your family heritage and find out exactly where you came from on this planet. Right. And um, it, haplogroup X2A was only discovered in 1998. That's not that long ago. I, I thought it was in 97, but I was just confirmed it's 98. Um, so here's the deal with haplogroup X2A. It throws our history books regardless right out the window because we've been told that every – being that came into the Americas came through an Asian migration route, and that's haplogroup A, B, C, and D. Well, in 98, 1998, they found out a brand new haplogroup that only this DNA only showed up in the giant skeletal remains that have been removed from these earth mounds. And in at least 3% of the Indian population, still to this day, because the mound builders under twined into the Native American Indian tribes. And that number can be way higher because not many Native American Indians has had their blood tested, but at least 3% are still haplogroup X2A. Now, this brings up a very interesting point right off the bat because it's no... No, it's not open to personal opinion. A few generations ago, this DNA was giants. You know what I mean? And now they're not. So something happened along the line. But I'll tell you, the, the third place that this haplogroup X2 a on the planet is is an ancient jerusalem interesting oh, yes hey, katya thank you for the phone call it was nice talking to you oh again, you're katya. welcome oh i love you guys love you right back katya be safe out there okay you too hey hi you're live on fade to black say hi to michael lee hill who's calling oh hello michael how are you hello. this is just rick what's your how name are you, jimmy uh, what, just rick I just go by Rich. Hey, Rich, how you doing? I'm doing fine. You mentioned um, a, a few things in terms of uh, the Anunnaki and um, them might be responsible for um, our woes in 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 the country now. Mm-hmm. I've heard the Palladians um, channeled, and I've listened to almost all of them. And almost all of them, they, they claim that they are responsible, more or less, for what we're going through now. They call it tyranny. What do you think of that? I see that a lot, and that's what I'm saying. I understand that there's this negative connotation put out there, but it almost seems to me you need to understand that humanity has been under an experiment very long ago that dealt with the whole reason the Nephilim was even created was to try to help humanity through the last pole shift. And to do this, it was decided upon by Inky's mother's side, the elders who were not Anunnaki, they were Elohim, um, that, well, what could be done to try to help humanity? And uh, they said, well, this idea of yours, Inky, of this arc, that's pretty fascinating, but if we weren't evolving fast enough is what they concluded because we were brought into what they called Eden in the own, their own Sumerian word for it. We weren't evolving fast enough to be ready for this dimensional shift that was at the end of 2012. Um, because of this, a whole experiment was put into place 
for humanity to experience its own mental energy in an accelerated fashion, both light and dark, in the hopes that we would experience, because the Anunnaki know that thoughts have an electromagnetic reality, that thoughts have energy, and energy can't be created or destroyed. It needs to be transmuted. Well, if thoughts have a waveform attached, which they do, how do you transmute a negative thought form? Well, you live it. That's the truth of the matter. It comes up into your own personal reality. And if you can choose love over fear, you'll transmute that energy into its higher octave and you'll be done with it and it will not come back in your life. If you don't transmute it, it'll just keep coming back over and over and over again. And uh, you'll go, why does the same crap keep happening to me? It's different people, but yeah. it's the same experience. It's because you haven't transmuted those energies and they will keep returning until you choose love. And we can all do it right now, you know, no, no time needed. But, I agree with you 100%. 100%. But if, you, if you just focus on Team Bad Cop, who it is their spiritual role to look out over mass consciousness. And if they see someone vibrating fear, they'll make sure that person gets a chance to experience their own dark baggage in hopes that they'll change it. Um, but... That's only looking at Team Bad Cop. And I can tell you, if you're a human who's catering to a multidimensional being, being Marduk, who's in charge of reflecting back a negative polarity, and you go into that meeting with a lot of fear and doubt and garbage in your belief system, well, you're going to view that person as a demon because they're going to make you experience all your darkness. And uh, there's a whole other side, though, man, of that. I think this is why it's confusing for people, because some people will go, the Anunnaki have been guiding us into the higher realms and giving us sacred geometry and physics of light and sound and music. And they have, you know, philosophy. They've given us agriculture and architecture. And it's actually in the Sumerian clay ta tablets of the Anunnaki handing down these thought forms of architecture and agriculture, even how to plant seeds and the making of beer which I'm really appreciative of. <laughs> um, so if you look at Team Good Cop, then you'll go, wow, these, these guys have been really trying to inspire us into the higher realms. And it's true. If you just focus on Team Bad Cop, you'll go, oh, my God, these are the ones that are causing all the problems on this planet. And it's true in a sense. Well, thank you need you. to understand that both of them are working in cooperation to help humanity evolve as fastly as possible by making us experience our own mental energy in an accelerated fashion. Thank you for okay. the call, Rich. You're welcome, Jim. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thank you so much. Great phone call. Yes. Uh, let's, I've got, I've got uh, 100 questions in front of me. This is what AMA is all about. This is from Matthew. He says, do you think that the Anunnaki may be an offshoot of the Arcturian culture, which I believe to be older, highly evolved, and the protectors of this and many other universes? Yes. Um, I can tell you plainly that I've had more Arcturian contact than I even have Anunnaki. And I'm talking in the physical and this, you know, this came through as well as I met an Arcturian contactee who went on to became, become a famous musician. That's Dan Reed, mm -hmm. the Dan Reed Network. Mm -hmm. um, and I've often wondered, well, what does the Arcturians and the Anunnaki have to do with one another? Because I truly didn't know the answer. What I've heard is the Elohim is almost like a, a label of a team that there's not there's multiple races within the Elohim and within the El Elohim is Inky's mother's side and the Arcturians so Arcturians and the Elohim are both within that umbrella of Elohim because I can tell you the Elohim are absolutely involved with the Anunnaki human hybrid bloodline on this planet. And it was an Arcturian spokesperson who has been given the responsibility of forming a council. The Native, Native American Indians call this council the Rainbow Warriors. So your listeners can go do Rainbow Warrior Prophecy and check this out because it does deal with exactly what we're talking about, which is just learning a little bit of respect about who the Native American Indians were and starting to take a listen to what they have to say because they know who the mound builders were, the people who made the Serpent Mound and the New York Earthworks and soon to be revealed East Lake site. They know that they're the remnants of the Atlanteans. And Atlantis by Edgar Casey was called the Poseidians. Well, Poseidon is Inky. It is the place of 
the Nephilim. Uh, for our audience that may not know, who were the Arcturians? The Arcturians, all I can tell you is uh, Edgar Casey said that they're the most evolved beings on this planet. And I can share a story with you. Um, I had a dear friend that has those Tibetan singing bowls, the crystal uh -huh. big white yep. bowls. Yep. <clears throat> and she came over when Dan, because when me and Dan Reed have become so close that when he comes to Cleveland, I play guitar for him at his shows and he stays at my house while he's here. So this girl stops over and she brings these singing bowls out and me and Dan tuned our guitars to her bowls. And we had this jam session. We just, and it was mind blowing what was happening in the room. It truly was. And uh, so after that, a couple days, he was going back to New York and he had invited me. He goes, Why don't you come and stay with me at New York? I got a show in New York on like the 10th. And then on the 12th, I got a show in New Jersey. And why don't you come and hang out? We'll go to both shows. And uh, so while I was there, I was friends with this girl that was a psychic on uh, Jesse Ventura. Uh, conspiracy theory show and she lived in New York so she met me at the Dan Reed concert and she's a psychic right she goes I, you know I got a, con a message from the Arcturians for you she goes I don't really ever get a message from the Arcturians she goes they really enjoyed the music you and Dan did with the girl with the white bowls oh shut up I swear to God dude oh, wow <laughs> um, yeah so if you want confirmation Ooh. of the Arcturians, you know, <laughs> I guess they were in my house, right? <laughs> yeah, man. You know, that's a thing, man. People think I'm making some of this shit up, and that's why, you know, it's like I can't make this shit up. I'd be a writing for Spielberg, you know? <laughs> right, right. No, no. He couldn't even do it that good. So, uh, Okay, let's go back. Uh, phone lines are open, 323-825-5045, 323-825-5045. Next question. This is from Walter. I knew we were going to go here. We might as well go here now. Could Michael explain the significance of 432 hertz? <laughs> well, that's a loaded question, but yes, I can. You know, there's such a thing as cosmic harmonious frequencies. And when you find out that everything in the universe is being created by certain geometry, when you look from an atom to a galaxy, like one is the Fibonacci sequence. And a lot of people, I'm sure, I'll be preaching to the choir about that, so I'm just gonna let that go. But the Fibonacci sequence, you know, you can map that mathematical sequence as a curve and it's a perfect seashell. It's a perfect galaxy, you know, mathematically. Um, it's in our cells, you know. And everything from the atom to the galaxy is using this very specific geometry. Well, then it should tell you, you know, first of all, we think that the only way to get to geometry is through math and all this. Well, what they found recently is that frequency alone being pumped through a liquid medium such as water will create geometry from nothing but frequency alone. And it's like being able to see what frequency does through a real physical medium, our reality, and that's water. We're all water, right? You know, mostly. So, um, what you find out is just like if you got in your car and you wanted to find a station and you did a frequency sweep, well, you're going to start with low frequencies. There's nothing but noise and you're going to move to the right. Sooner or later, you're going to tune into a station and it's going to be the clearest as possible and the most in focus at one point. Then you're going to move to the right and you're going to get more noise and more noise until there's nothing but noise. Right. You'll eventually turn into another station. The same way using this technology you'll tune into a frequency that creates perfect geometry. Then you look at the dial, well, what frequency are we at? And keep going, you know? And what they found out, the most harmonious frequency is 432 hertz. And the reason that this is important is it's truly the only frequency that is a component of light. And if you think of Einstein, E equals MC squared, well, our today's top scientists tell us everything is both a particle and a wave. Well, that's the only particle part of the equation. It's mass. It's right there in it. E is energy, M is mass, and then C is the speed of light. But when you learn 432 squared is the speed of light, everyone just get your calculator out and do 432 times 432. It is 186,000 something. It's within 1% accuracy. Right. It plugs into the equation then. The only frequencies that are truly a component of light is when the frequency is tuned to 432. And why I can tell you this is so important to the Anunnaki for us to understand this, they, in, 
they've been trying to guide us into this information for so long. Our own time system that was given to the Sumerians by the Anunnaki pre-Egypt um, is the time system we still use to this day. And that is, you know, there's the second, right? You know, that's the lowest common way of dividing time. We have milliseconds, whatever, but for the common person, it's a second. And then, you know, 60 seconds make a minute. And then, you know, so on and so forth. Well, do the math. Get out your calculator again and see how many seconds are in 12 hours. Okay, I'm working on all of this right now. Keep going. Don't it's, stop. It's, it's 43,200. There is 43,200 seconds in 12 hours. They've been guiding us into the significance of 432, even through our own way of timekeeping. And then you find out these octaves, why this is important to what we're saying is anytime, like say you do have a piano and it's tuned properly, you know, you got the middle A note is tuned to 432 instead of 440. Um, wow. Well, you have all these lower notes on the piano where if you go to the left and you hit that lower octave, then there's another lower A, then another lower A. Well, Pythagoras was the one that learned. It's really easy math, man. If you want to get to the lower octave, mathematically, take 432 and divide it by 2, and it'll give you the proper lower octave of 432. Right. That's, that's 216. And because 216 and 216 is 432, it's just that simple. But then you go one octave lower, it's going to be 108 because 108 and 108 is 216 and it goes on and on until you get down to 27 what i can tell you is what i've what they have revealed to me that i'm going to reveal to the world at the next star knowledge conference is these all these octaves of the most cosmic harmonious frequency that is truly a component of light that plugs into the e equals mc squared equation uh all this information of the actual frequencies has been encoded into the actual structure and layouts and measurements of the earth mounds. These sites are the remnants of the ancients. It of the is, it, it, 432 Lanterns. times 432. And it's provable. 432 times 432. Yeah, it's right here. 186, 684. That's uh, 664. That's, that's, yeah. pretty, that's, pretty, that's pretty nutty. Isn't it like – it's easy – to wrap your head around but at the same time so profound you find out dude if you look at the, like the earth and the moon and and the sacred geometry that falls out of that and you convert it into miles you'll find out that like the moon is 1080 uh miles across let's get back i've, I've got so no. many i've got to so, get i've got to get all these questions in let's right get to on, the right next on. one if abstract art, well, actually, there's another one here, too, that's going back to the speed of light. Okay, well, anyway, I'm going to do these in order. If abstract art is a sign of intelligence, perhaps crop circles are their art form. What do you think about that? You know, I don't think, I think we're just now beginning to even understand what crop circles are. Um, but what I can, yeah, I mean, they are a beautiful new art form, period, because, you know, the, it is artistic and it's encoded with so much information. Um, but, you know, the whole subject of somatics and taking frequencies and making them visible and seeing what geometry is in essential in the future of decoding what's being communicated to us through crop circles. Because not only is it a beautiful art form, but they are communicating. And especially uh, it gets back to 432. You know, the whole subject of 432 is expressed over and over again through crop circles. Well, when and I know that we talked about this briefly when you were on before the seven pointed star crop circles. Mm -hmm. uh, have you been able to try and this is from Do Sky. Have you have you been able to try to interpret musical notes and, and maybe play music from crop circles? I, I haven't, you know, I've gotten to the point because what I did is in my own research of all this, I tracked down the proper cymatic image for every note within the musical scale, but it was tuned properly to Pythagorean tuning, which is the A equal in 432. Right. Um, I had every image of every note within the musical scale, and I had created these discs of each one. And um, that working with those discs is what allowed me to have the revelation that you know the a 27 hertz which is four octaves below 432 
produces that perfect seven-pointed star. It's absolutely 432 related, and there, right there it was in the inky crop circle. That was a huge moment of revelation for me that brought me to tears as well because I had asked them for confirmation. They told me first that, you know, I was associated with this being named Inky. To me, I had never even heard of an Anunnaki, so the title Inky meant nothing to me. I asked them for confirmation. I said, put the name in a crop circle. I said, and while you're at it, because at first I thought, what a, you know, we got over this, I think, in the last interview. But, you know, sooner or later, I'm like, well, if you are who you say you are, you'll figure out. You know, put your name in a crop circle and encode it with some informa- information that more than likely I'm the only one that would be able to decode it. I don't know what that would be, but have fun. You know, and a couple of years later, this crop circle shows up that is encoded with Inky, and it's encoded with a seven-pointed star, which is the... Babylonian world map that sits in a museum right now is a seven-pointed star. It's Bear Bear Cloud, who's a tribal elder, said that once mankind understands the magnificence, again, it's almost like Tesla talk, that uh, the seven-pointed star will produce itself macro and micro, forward and backwards, in perfect fractal geometry as a whole unit will enter a new age for mankind. Next question. Yeah, next question. Here we go. Uh, ask Michael if he's been able to see into his own Akashic records, and that's from Les. Mm. I have past life recall of living a life as a monk, you know, in Tibet. Um, a lot of martial arts things of, you know, martial arts has always come very easily to me. And, uh, but, um, I seem to be very focused right now into this life as me, Michael, right here, because I've learned the only thing that's really real in this reality is the moment point. That's your moment of power. The only time you can truly uh, affect anything in this reality is when your your consciousness is focused, your attention is focused into the moment. And if you're in your cell phone, you're not going to be there. If you're thinking about what you wish this moment was, it's not going to be there. If you're thinking about what you needed to do a week from now, you're not in the moment. The moment is the only thing that's real. Um, yeah, but the I, Dalai Lama has got his cell phone, he's got his S6 out right now <laughs> on Twitter. <laughs> but, uh, hey, Dalai Lama. <laughs> oh, that, that is just I can't wait to see him again. You know, Dan Reed actually went and interviewed the Dalai Lama. Um, for Spin Magazine, and that's what sent him on his way of the spiritual pilgrimage where he eventually met the Arcturians. It's not like this light story, you know what I mean? Right. And I said, wouldn't it be cool to get Dan and we'll talk about all of this on a radio show? Yeah, yeah, we got to do that, and and, and we got to bring Brian on too as well. That would be fantastic. He can, that would you be know, a dream. Can, <laughs> I remember uh, when I first met Brian, and, uh, and I met him, uh, I didn't know he was a guitar player, right? He was a Pro Tool. This is when Pro Tools first came. This is early 90s. And uh, I'm going to say 93, 94. And I remember him one day. He goes, you know, actually, man, I'm a guitar player. You know, I'm not this computer guy. I'm a guitar player. I was like, yeah, right. Because I had another respect for him in another, you know, at another level. All right. And, on. and then, then I found out that the dude could really, really shred. You know, he's just a really talented guy. And, and his vocals, dude. Yeah, he, man. You know, he's yeah. the package. And yeah. I think he's one of the most underrated. Well, maybe this new album will show the world a, a real talent of who he is. Well, those first uh, couple of records uh, with Dan Reed, I can't, we're going off, uh, we're going off of the uh, the AMA here. I don't want to do that. <laughs> right on, but, right on. But, but, I mean, we're talking about Bruce Fairbairn, you know, big producers, big, you know. Uh, uh, Bill Graham. Yeah, you know? Bill Graham, and, and everything was thrown behind Dan Reed back then. Yeah. And, uh, uh, anyway, let's save that for another show. Okay, back, back to the AMA. Uh, let's see. Please ask why the Anunnaki he has met was stuck here and how he became stuck here and why the current technology can't help him leave. And that's from Allison. They were never stuck. There was a ground crew that was left, you know, as when this experiment went through, the, you know. So th- th- this puts in a, a whole time frame that we can now start talking about because if – Truly, the reason that the Nephilim was even created was 25,000 years ago was the biblical flood event. And then 
10,500 years ago was the event that sunk Atlantis for the last time, and the Atlanteans went to the left and went up into the North American continent and became what was known as the Mound Builders eventually. Um, uh, man, this is such deep questions. That I, I don't. It's. Uh, I don't know really how to answer it in any quick way. <laughs> Take your time. I, I need to know this, and if I learn something, so does the audience. So take your time. Well, I'm curious. Well, let me then let's go back and look at the question again, because she says, um, uh, you know, the the Anunnaki that you met was stuck here. But you're saying oh, he wasn't. They're, they're not stuck here. There was an there was an experiment put into place that would help us evolve faster. But the rule was hands off. We needed to be able to make decisions light and dark on our own with no outside intervention. And because of this. The, you know, and this whole experiment of ex accelerating human darkness and light was well underway. So, um, uh, they never left. There was a skeleton crew all along. And even with Zachariah Sitchin, you'll find out that in the Sumerian clay tablets, it said the most Anunnaki that was ever on this planet, um, was 600. And that's, that's the real. Anunnaki in their native physical form, not the Nephilim hybrids. Probably a hell of a lot more hybrids now, but um, they they uh, they've been here all along. Next question: When you made contact with the Sam, what help uh, did they promise to humankind? Well, they said that they said everything that they did w from the succession of kingship to both the earth realm throne and then the mirror throne was based on what they call the processional cycle at that time i didn't even know what a processional cycle was i'm like oh okay but they said and how the anunnaki relate to mankind was intertwined into the processional cycle they said this is why this whole you know the the age of aquarius right and it's always been prophesied I, that it would be this time of when mankind would come into its glory and enter a new golden age where we could prosper and, and, and look into our own creative wills, you know, and uh, make it work. Um, they said that with the age of Aquarius, this experiment to accelerate our duality would come to an end that day, which is February, February 4th, 14th, 2009. Sorry. Um, that was the actual entry into the age of Aquarius. They're saying from that day, the supernatural oomph to create event strings from Team Bad Cop. Imagine now if all Team Bad Cop members have switched over to Team Good Cop right. to create event strings that will bring mankind as quickly and safely and panic free into the new golden age. That's what's happening. Um, and. I, I think that answers the question. Let's go to the phones. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Say hi to Michael Lee Hill. What's your question? Hi, hey, Michael Lee. This is Sal from Ole in New York. Uh, How you doing? We good. How are you? I'm doing uh, good. We met you uh, very briefly last year at the MUFON conference in Erie, Pennsylvania. And, ah. uh, that was very interesting. And I'll tell you, the show tonight is just super, just super. Thank um, you. The, one of the most intriguing parts of your lecture in Erie was when you mentioned the possible existence of underground cities in, uh, under Lake Erie. Yeah. I was wondering if you could elaborate on that a little bit this evening. Well, I'll tell you everything that I know is, um, you know, the head of the Labyrinth Group that you asked me about, Jimmy, um, which I, you know, sometimes we, me and you, I just have to have the talk because I'm blown away that you even know who the wing makers are because not many do. I've got, I've got all the books right here. Right on. Yes. Um, well, this area, what had happened is the head of the Labyrinth Group asked me, you know, Michael, you know what you're sitting on in that area, don't you? And I said, no. He said, it's one of the world's oldest underground bases but it's not ours and he said the last time he visited there was like 2007 and he said he took that long drive down route 75 through detroit and uh and he said there's an entrance there to the base and you know being 
the computer geek that I am, I'm like, well, what's the hell? You know, I went, I went and Googled Detroit and Route 75. You'll find out that dead ends in the Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. So what he was telling me is there is an entrance in Wright-Patterson Air Force Base where you hop on a train and you'll get taken to this oldest underground base, Anunnaki base in this area. But why this is so important is when I started experiencing all this UFO activity in this area, I started <clears throat> looking into past activity and I found newspaper articles from the 1800s of people reporting the same activity over the lake. They call them wizard lights. They say there's these big burning balls of light out over the lake and uh, you know no shipwreck would ever be found and they didn't know what they were. And then, uh, So right there I knew this wasn't our technology. If it was being reported here in the 1800s, but what I can tell you is now through my own research, and we talked about who the mound builders are and how they are the Nephilim, who are the Anunnaki human hybrid bloodline on this planet. Well, their first home base is in this area, and it's provable. Like people right now, it's going to blow your mind. Just go to Google Earth Maps or whatever it is and type in East Lake, Ohio, Lost Nation. Right there should give you a clue, right? <laughs> Lost Nation will dead end right where Lake Erie is. And if you take a left, within one mile, you're going to come to East Lake Middle School. And what is going to be revealed is that was the first site of the Mound Builders ever. And what was there was a huge earth mound complex with walls that were 660 feet long, which is encoding 432 information, by the way. Um, it had 660 foot long walls around a huge pyramidal complex that was kind of like Cahokia. This is one of the largest uh, centers for the mound builders that even was and no one even knows about it now. And I've already got artifacts that have been removed from the mounds and the tribal elders are in the process of decoding those. And I can already tell you that one of the symbols that's on the Zuni reservation wall that is the symbol of Inky is here in Eastlake. Isn't that interesting? And back in Sumeria. But the thing is, so you take Lost Nation Road through Ohio until it dead ends on, onto Lakeshore Boulevard. Um, go to the left. Within one mile, you're at the site of the first Mount Builders site on the planet. But if you go to the right, the first street you come to is Iroquois. And then Seneca and then Mohawk and Cherokee. It's telling you what happened to the Lost Nation. Remember I said Haplogroup X2A the only place it showed up was ancient Israel, mound builders' remains, and Native American Indians to this day. It is revealing of one of the lost tribes of Israel, and it is the Nephilim. Interesting. I'm actually looking at this right now on right? Uh, Google Satellite. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty trippy, man. Yeah, dude. And people don't even know what's coming up. I'm working with the East Lake Historical Society um, to bring all the tribal elders here to announce this first site of the Mound Builders. And the whole thing of who they were are going to be rewritten for history because, you know, in Western Ohio, they call them the Hopewell. Well, Hopewell was the name, the last name of the farmer who owned the land that these earth mounds were on. Had nothing to do with the Indian culture. The same way in East Lake, Ohio, the same culture is known as the Witzeli Indian culture. And that was the name of the army surveyor who surveyed the place in the late 1800s. Nothing to do with the Indian culture. So right now, the National History Museum of Cleveland is doing a multi-million dollar renovation. All this is going to be revealed. I'm bringing the tribal elders here. We're getting these artifacts decoded. It's going to be proven that the mound builders are the remnants of the Atlanteans, are as true Nephilim, and this will be all done when the, Nef when the actual Anunnaki return. You don't have to take my word for it, but it's all there right now for people who want to look into it. There's even, so a, there's even a Lost Nation golf course right next to the mounds. That's pretty trippy, too. <laughs> and you see off Lost Nation right there is Lost Nation Airport. Yep. In the very near past, that, had, that was a whole mound complex itself. They said that this area is truly the biggest Indian burial mound in the world. There's more Indians under my feet right now than in any other place on this planet. Yeah, that's pretty trippy. I'm actually looking at it. Hey, Sal, anything else really quick? Uh, no, I think that's great. I'll, I'll ask another question another time. Okay, thank you so uh, much, Sal. Have a great thank night. Thank you. All right, let's go back to the questions. We have, uh, 
were we the workforce behind the gold that they mined? And, oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Next. That's why we were actually, you know, yeah. Next question. What can Michael say about the blue avions? And that's from Pat. Hey, Pat, that's a great question. And actually, um, I've come in contact with Thoth recently, or Negajita. You know, that would have been my son back in uh, Samaria. But he's very involved with the Enoch 2 and the Blue Avians. And I can tell you myself, the Blue Avians just keep knocking on my door. Like, I'll meet people that don't even know what a Blue Avian is. They said, man, I got to share the story with you. I don't know why I'm telling you this, but I met this bird being. He had a blue head. And, and I'm like, oh, my God, here it goes again. You know, and they didn't even know. I'm like, you should look into the Blue Avians. I don't even know what the Blue Avians are because they've not met me face to face. But, uh... They seem to be all around me, and I asked Thoth about this because he, you know, he was known with the bird head, and he's very in contact with the blue avians. And he said they're here to make sure that this transition from reality A to B is, is effortless and, and peaceful. And um, so they're around me quite often because they know I'm truly in, you know, we all are in the middle of this transition, Let's uh, let's go back to the phones here. A Bing. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Say hi to Michael Lee Hill. Who's calling? Matthew. Hi, Matthew. How are you? Pretty good. Hi, Mike. Hey, Matthew. How are you doing? Good. Hey, I was reading this thing from um, a Hopi Indian, and they were talking about um, calling the Hopis the white and the um, white people the green. Do you know anything about that? I do not. Actually, uh, you know, up until 2008, I was adopted, and I didn't know of my Iroquois Indian heritage. Um, that wasn't until late 2008. So, boy, I'm getting a crash course with, you know, being around all these elders, and it's weird because, you know, it, it's kind of a strange thing because, man, they're there, the full regalia, you know, and everything, and here I am with, like, my ripped-up jeans, you know. <laughs> it's just a strange a circumstance, but... um. Well, Michael, let me ask you a uh, really quick. Why do you ask the question? Why did I ask the question? Yeah, yeah. Because um, I was reading about the Star Warriors, and it was told through a Hopi Indian. Okay, okay. I think look into the what I was saying with the Rainbow Warrior prophecy, because I know the Hopis are involved with that. It sounds very similar to what I was talking about, which is pretty much just, you know, the surfacing in the future of some beings that who are more involved with the benefit of all than their own wallets well right and that's what they were talking about too yeah so thank you matthew um, oh do you have another question you. uh no just um i sent both of you guys a picture of my ufo from san juan puerto rico so hopefully you guys got it all right on. i'll yeah. check it out yeah thank you so much okay. and i did get it all right bye. peace all right bye uh, back to the questions. How does Michael feel? The phone lines are open, 323-825-5045. Uh, how does Michael deal with the skeptics in his life? <laughs> Has his family... Well, hold on, there's a part two here. Has his family and friends been accepting of everything towards his beliefs? And that's from Carol. It's a very great question. Um, I can tell you, I don't care what anyone else thinks. I'm really, you know, it's funny because the NSA or the, the, you know, the AR Borden group, there's a woman who's a great writer and she does a lot of work writing it within that group. And uh, that's Karen Kirkpatrick, by the way. She coined a term called the integrated experiencer and is based on me which i was very honored that's someone like you get to a point you don't need outside validation of anything in your life you're like well this happened to me if you like you know that's almost why i just released the picture of the history channel show you know when i tell people yeah i had a harvard professor tell me that I don't have normal human blood. Almost their full first reaction is, you're full of shit, or excuse me. Right. You know, um, and I'm thinking, man, I'm not making this up. If you just give me the benefit of the doubt, this is a real experience I'm trying to communicate to you, and I know it's weird, you know, but, um, you know, I just put these pictures out of me being filmed at the Boston uh, hospital with 
boyers coming out of my arms where I'm having blood removed from me. These are real events in my life. I'm not making this stuff up, you know? Right, right, <laughs> right. Uh, let's go so, back to the phones. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Who's calling? Say hi to Michael Lee Hill. What's your question? Hey, Mike. How are you? How you doing, Jimmy? This is Captain. How are you, sir? Hi, Captain. Hey, Captain. Okay, Jimmy, I'm a big uh, fan of yours. And, and, Michael, I'm telling you, you are the bomb. <laughs> uh, well, okay. All righty. So like, it's a good way I'll to start out. <laughs> not, not that makes you wonder what Give the question. Yeah, it no, makes I'm you wonder what the question is. <laughs> well, let me say this, and Michael, I want you to be a witness to what I'm about to say. Mm -hmm. When people go to the hospital, and they are uh, in the hospital for for a long period of time, blood is being drawn. And people need to ask the question, where did the blood go? And I, and I said to people, uh, even on my conference call, I tell them that the blood is being replicated. And when it's being replicated, I mean that there are other yous on other universes. What do you say on that, sir? I say it's that way regardless. I think that we're living in a reality where there's a million parallel universes and parallel realities where things are playing out maybe a slightly a little bit differently kind of like sliders remember that tv show absolutely um that was based on jane roberts by the way jimmy we talk about seth material right well um, that I think, and and also uh the uh the the tv show fringe indeed indeed yeah, yeah. i think that you know, we exist already. I think that how truly powerful we are that be silly about it. When you get up in the morning and say you, you're you really torn on whether you want a bowl of Frosted Flakes or you want a bowl of Wheaties, well, the universe rips apart with all the galaxies and all the solar systems and all the planets. And in one reality, you'll experience you eating Frosted Flakes. In the other one, you'll experience eating Wheaties. And you'll think that each of you are the real you. But truly... The spider web of choosing different experiences from fear to love creates this web, and you tune into it through your own beliefs. Of you know, yes, absolutely, uh, Michael. Also, I got one more question, and I'm gonna, then I'm gonna hang up. Uh, you mentioned earlier in the program about A C I O. I know exactly what it is and what it's here for. President Obama is the only president that is signature. His signature is 19.5 degrees. If people will look on the map and find out where that's located at, uh, he was born in Hawaii. Mm. He is the only president. I want to say this. He's the only president that has visited Mars and lived. What do you say about that, Michael? Well, I don't know about that, but I can tell you that Obama was very important with my first meetings with the Anunnaki because, man, this gets into a weird subject. I probably, you know, it'll make for good radio. Before his first election, they told me it was important to vote and make my, because I hadn't voted. I'm like, what's the use? But I did vote, and I did vote for Obama. And they said that's good because in the near future, it's going to be proven he's not eligible to be president. <laughs> I was like, wow, that, well, that's weird, right? And this is before the first election. This is before any mention of his birth certificate issues. But they said it actually was the right choice. Regardless of what we think about Obama now, they told me, the Anunnaki themselves, that that was a turning point for because our mass consciousness said no more from the what we had learned the previous eight years from the Bush administrations, that we cheat, we cried out for change to the point that we got over some of our prejudice issues as a race and even elected a black president. They said that was signed to above that if we would have voted for McCain, I believe it was in that presidency, we would have got the doom and gloom ending to this story. Thank you for the call, Captain. All right. Thank you very much, sir. And once again, what a great show, Jimmy. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Captain. Uh, let's uh, let's go back to I've I've got a ton of questions here. Let's do we'll do a couple more or one, and then we'll uh, head to a break. How does Michael? Oh, oh, wait a minute. No, I just did that one. Okay, is Michael aware of the tablet of Shamash? And that's from Josh. 
Hey, Josh. But no, I'm not. Okay. There you go. <laughs> there, there's that. And uh, you know what? Let's uh, let's grab this call here. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Who's calling? Hey, this is Mark from Oregon, Jimmy. Hey, Mark. How are you? Say hi to Michael Lee Hill. Michael Lee Hill, hello. Glad to talk to you, sir. Hey, man. How are you doing? I'm doing good. So um, I was curious, this A at 440 versus A at 432. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, my first thought was, how does that affect the tuning of a concert grand piano? So I'm curious. I go on the web and I look this up, and I find out that this A440 tuning was standardized in 1955. Yeah, by a Nazi and scientist. Yes. <laughs> I think, yeah, Goebbels, uh, right. Yeah. And, and I found this really interesting because I've always been attracted to music from the 40s and the 50s because of that tonal difference in the music that's there. And I wondered... From a practical point of view, you already said it was it was from a, a Nazi scientist, but uh, the negative effect of music played slightly off key. Oh yeah. That, is is there an oppositional group trying to change the resonance? I mean, yeah, I'm, they, I'm they were going with they were called with Van this idea Halen. that our DNA <laughs> is programmable and reacts to the frequencies that it's exposed to. You know, it was very on purpose because, you know, with, with the whole seconds and dividing things by 12 and, you know, the significance of 12 being given to us by them in our own counting systems being, you know, 12 months in a year, 12 hours in a clock, you know, 12 astrology, 12 apostles, you know, the list just goes on and on. Uh, if you take 432 and divide it by 12, you get a perfect 36. And what's interesting is with 432 itself, when Nik- Nikolai Tesla said, if we understood the magnificence of 3, 6, and 9, we'd unlock a key to the universe. Well, if you take the octaves, which we've already discussed as 216, 108, 54, 27, every one of those numbers, if you add them together, equals 9. You know, 4 and 3 and 2 is 9. All, div- one and, all you know, divisible by 3. Yes, indeed. Yes. So the same way, when you divide 432 by 12, you get 36, and 3 and 6 is 9. It's a different way of stating 432. But if you take 440 and divide it by 12, and this is really interesting, what you get is 36 point. 36666666666. It goes out about, uh, about 15 decimal places. And the Arcturian spokesman, man, he looked at that and he goes, look at that. It's pretending to be sacred geometry while it's still being an imposter. It's the closest you can get to being a real prime number. It's got a really long, it's not chaos. It's point six 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 six. You know, it's an abnormal amount of sixes. It is the closest thing you can get and I think it's totally done on purpose because they understand our brains are natural. And if everything is made um, with the 432 frequency of light, you know, then everyone knows that, you know, all atoms are light. If you put an atom in an atomic accelerator and slam them together, light is produced, gamma rays. So everything truly is light slowed down. Um, it, I think all this really starts to get into then the significance of 432 and all this that we're getting into. But um, well, you know what I found, uh, and and check this out, Mark. What I early on in my guitar learning curve, early on, um, when I would tune off of a 440. It, just a little bit. It didn't matter. Just go off of it a little bit, either up or down. It doesn't. It, it didn't matter, but it sounded smoother to me. It sounded better. And then Van Halen comes along, and I don't want to crack a joke about this, but Eddie was the first because everybody was tuning to A440, 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 and Eddie comes along and he's tuning down, and it, it had an appeal to the ear. There was a thing that sounded, it just made you groove, and it it, it pulled you into the music. And it, I don't know if it was, um, uh, if, if, if it was closer to 432, I don't want to use the word for, I don't want to use that number 432, but it was off of 440. No, I point. can tell you what happens, Jimmy. In a half step down, it takes it down to 418. Um, I found this out through some of the people, the insiders. But, man, it's a hell of a lot better than 440. That's and, right. That's right. And if, and, and, it's creating a lot more geometry in what's being 
like you said, it not only is it easier to the ear, it's like you feel it in your soul at another level because there's actually more information in the signal. It was it, yeah, it, it was it was a tune is really close to the old uh, baroque tuning uh, for for medieval music. Ah, ah, well, that could be that mm. could be. Well, very, so is a quarter cool. is a quarter tone four thirty two. No, a quarter tone is 418. If you drop it down a whole half step, you know, like Van Halen or, right, you know. Right, right. Then, uh, then your A will be at 418. I got Because four, 432 is actually very slight, but in a cosmic sense, it's everything. It's like taking the focus on a camera and just when you go from 440 to 432, it comes into the most beautiful in-focus geometry that you will get. But if you go down to 14, I'm, I just feel it at a soul level because it's, Oh, the the musicians that have chosen a half step down tuning have went on to produce timeless music. Okay, I, I gotta <laughs> I gotta do a break right here. Mark, thank you for the phone call. Okay, but there's a conspiracy behind this. I want to hear you talk about that some more. Okay, you got it. Thank, thank you, Mark. This is Fade to Black, our AMA week, night two, Michael Lee Hill. More with Michael right after this short break. Hi everybody, this is Rob Halford, the Metal God on JimmyChurchRadio.com. KGRA Radio Intelligent Talk Why do people order Life Change Tea? Because Life Change Tea helps the digestive system Life Change Tea helps the colon unclog The tea also helps with high blood pressure, high cholesterol And many, many other health issues Life Change Tea also tastes great And Life Change Tea is not just green tea Life Change Tea is a unique blend of eight different herbs That go to town Cleaning your body of harmful toxins, bacteria, and parasites Our tea is number one Are you ready for your life change? Let the tea help you. Log on to our online store of helpful products to get your body on track. Log on to getthetea.com. That's getthetea.com. Or you can call us at 928-308-0408. That's 928-308-0408. Not all tea is equal. Read our website of all the factual testimonies that prove that Life Change Tea is working. Health is important, and our quality of life is very important. Don't wait to order. Expect a life change with Life Change Tea at Get Get the tea.com. Are you a paranormal investigator, ghost hunter, or UFO sky watcher? If so, FNGinnovations.com has the product you definitely need in your investigations kit or go bag. Introducing the Morpholite Wide Beam Tactical Flashlights that put the light where you need it most. Traditional flashlights shine a focused round beam with limited line of sight in the dark. Morpholite Tactical Flashlights change all that, utilizing a revolutionary wide beam design to enable you to see safety hazards such as hanging wires and steel, pipes and holes in the floor you just can't see with a focused round beam. In the field where safety is paramount, a 180 degree beam increases orientation and peripheral vision in the dark. Morpholite flashlights are ideal for investigations in abandoned facilities such as houses and hospitals, factories, caves and tunnels. Avoid those low hanging tree branches that poke your eyes in the woods. Visit FNGinnovations.com to see a full line of tactical lights and accessories. That's FNGinnovations.com. Now you can find all your favorite talk radio shows live all in one place at TalkStreamLive.com. Listen from anywhere, office, home, or in your car. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com and click on one of the many live talk show hosts you want to listen to. It's free and easy. No computer? Download the smartphone apps. Never miss your favorite talk show. Find them all at TalkStreamLive.com. You want to know a secret? I love ponies. I really love ponies. I'm serious. I couldn't stay sane without ponies to brush. Why fade to black? Because you never got that pony. Damn it. This is Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. Welcome back to Fade to Black. 
I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Tonight is day two of our four straight AMA nights right here on Fade to Black. And our guest tonight is Michael Lee Hill. Tomorrow night, Leo Zagami is going to be here from Rome, Italy. It will be your chance to AMA with an Illuminati. And that's going to be great. Thursday night, it's going to be me. Let's get back to Michael Lee Hill. Michael, are you there? Sure am. Okay. Question. Let's see here. Let's go right down the list. What does Michael think the effect of Nibiru is going to be? And that's from JTG. (laughs) Man, these are such loaded questions because the reality is in 2012, that's what the AR Board Informed team was trying to... uh, work on, which was telepathic communication with the incoming, to ask the Anunnaki to help us because all of our scientific data was indicating that this was a doom and gloom transit. And um, from what I understand, it's, it's, uh, the mission was successful. And, and, you know, I've said that when I met the Anunnaki back in 2008, they told me that there would be a celestial object that was visible in the skies, and it wouldn't be a question. It's not debatable. Then people would go, well, hey, isn't this what this ancient alien show was about? Right. Hey, maybe we should look into Zachariah Sitchin, because didn't he say that planet's inhabited? This is what they told me. And uh, they said uh, they just wanted to know what effect that this information that we believed it would have on Earth's institutions, in mean, religion, government, and economics, and whatever. Everyone was in, under uh, the same conclusion that, in their own words, they said that mankind had earned the right to be treated as equals. It, it kind of makes you wonder, uh, going back to uh, Corey's question at the front of the show about chemtrails mm-hmm. and what, uh, what the Anunnaki were doing with you know, gold. Mm-hmm. And and the atmosphere that could that be in a weird indirect way, exactly what the Anunnaki was doing back then? Could we be applying chemtrails to the same thing? And also, not only to block certain things from the atmosphere from getting in, but also maybe to block our view of what is out there coming Indeed. at us too as well. Very much so, but you know, if you put this into play, first of all, the Anunnaki have been in a skeleton crew here for the last twenty-five thousand years. Um, but beyond that, we know from Bob Dean saying it was the Anunnaki that met with Eisenhower in 1954. Well, one of the races, and uh, you know, it, it, A.R. Borden said that even though it didn't go public that we had made contact with the Anunnaki in 1954, there was technology transfer programs that were begun back then behind the scenes. If people weren't ready, it didn't really matter to them. They're well, like, well, we were still willing to learn, right? So I don't. if there's technology transfer programs that have been working with Anunnaki technology, I'm sure chemtrails came up. I don't. You, you know, I have a real weird problem with chemtrails as well because I know the Anunnaki side of it, and I know there's barium in it, and I'm not saying it's good stuff by any means. But um, I think it's not really been noticed that, man, this sounds a lot exactly like why the Anunnaki had come here to mine gold in the first place right. was to powderize it and put it up in their atmosphere to help shield it. And we are – no Anunnaki mythology necessary. We are going through the most intense – level of solar activity that we've ever known and uh just go to nasa go nasa 2012 solar event and you'll see in the mass media you know like a big chunk of the sun ripped off if it would have been facing us we you know so i don't think it's out of the question to start to realize that maybe this is an attempt of us working with them to try to minimize the effects of these increased solar activity that we're going through. And it might be a loophole for them, too. And they're like, well, yeah, it'll help shield Nibiru as it comes in. I don't know. You know? <laughs> there are no coincidences. Well, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's go right down the list. I, actually, um, I don't know if this is I'm, I'm, if I'm going to ask this out of order, but I want to go to uh, John. A wish knack because he says the curious tuning of instruments from the 1930s was a at 457 and what could that be and how about a at 439 mm, no idea yeah like I i'm saying you know i think it's really good now we have scientific 
technology called cymatics. And, you know, Jonathan Stewart Reed is the inventor of what's called the cymoscope. Yep. And we don't need our uh, opinions on the matter. You could take that device right now and see what kind of geometry is formed at those frequencies. See if they do anything. You know, find out which frequencies do create harmonious geometry. And then uh, let the answers reveal themselves through actual science and life physics. Is there a connection, perhaps new found or changed, between uh, music and your beliefs? And that's from Kurt. Well, music is still to this day is the only thing that's brought me joy. You know, all this stuff is really fascinating. And I asked, you know, this is all unfolded in a very quick time in my life. In 2008, I didn't even know my heritage due to being adopted. So all of this has unfolded um, very quickly. Uh, but did your music change? Uh, bef- you know, was there a, a pre- not intertwined in it? You know, of course everything progresses, but music has always been my spiritual release. Almost how, like I've always put on my CDs. Every CD has uh, mm-hmm. on the back of it says, "This CD is an attempt to communicate thoughts, feelings, and emotions." regarding our own personal realities that will never be expressed through words. Well, what? but I guess what he's asking, and, and I'll, I'll clarify it, is cool. there a pre-Anunnaki Michael Lee Hill and a post-Anunnaki Michael Lee Hill as a musician? The contact has always been there, but the actual label to what that intelligence is only came in 2008 um but it's always been there um and to me i've made more contact with the creator through music and sunsets than i ever have any building oh that's interesting um and well there was a part two to his uh question which was uh did you record that difference (laughs) (laughs) well yeah because as all of this was unfolding, before I even had my first spiritual awakening, I was recording music. Music has been my passion since I've been about five years old. It was just ingrained in me. So all the time through the unfolding of all these events in my life, I would record music. And almost as a way to work through those you know, things that were happening in my life. And a lot, a lot of it, you know... As good as things have gotten really surreal, because I know some of the stuff is very surreal, like that's crazy stuff. But I can tell you, the yin and yang has been very present in my, in my life until very recently. The dark has kind of like been fading away in one aspect. <clears throat> but, uh, you know, I, I'd like my friends now go mad. It's like there's a Michael Lee Hill 2.0 now here. And that's we'll leave it at that. <laughs> Musically and everything. <laughs> uh, Katya just uh, uh, said that uh, now we've got to get Chief on the show next. Right on. Because, That's fantastic. Uh, uh, is there any connection with the Anunnaki and CERN? And that is from George. Hmm, I have no idea. But I can tell you at the deepest levels, the Anunnaki are in involved in technology transfer programs. So technology of that magnitude, I'd be really shocked if they didn't have a part in it, to be honest, but I don't know. Let's go back to the phones. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Say hi to Michael Lee Hill. What's your question? Who's calling? Hey, Michael. Uh, this is Michael in the Adirondacks. Hey, Jimmy, how you doing? Hi, Michael. I got somebody sitting here. Listen, Michael, we got a, a quick question for you about... Um, and maybe a month or so ago, uh, our Skype was hacked, and the president of a company called, uh, I'm pretty sure it was a Garza, as opposed to maybe a Gorsa, mm-hmm. and uh, he took up about 45 minutes of that, that Skype message, and then the next 45 minutes were uh, taken up by a gentleman who um, occupies a very high place in the uh, national intelligence community. Mm-hmm. Now, these two groups uh, were presented to Cindy and I as being uh, related, and uh, the general gist of the message was um, that they were uh, interested in listing our um, services, so to speak. Now, uh, as a little bit of background, um, Cindy and I have uh, quite a bit of experience uh, working for the government. That's all I'll say. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're both retired. 
we live in a very remote area, and um, our experiences in uh, that government work uh, gave us the opportunity to see and do certain things that most people um, don't really have any idea of. Now, one of the things that we both noted is that you're very articulate about the substance of this uh, this contact, uh, this this whole uh, process that's um, in process. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I guess my question to you would be, uh, Cindy and our, our both question is, um, what do we do with uh, the information that we're getting right now? Uh, and I'm not, I'm not joking when I say telepathically. Mm-hmm. Um, her and I have, um, we, we've come to terms with the fact that um, we're uh, we're not where we're supposed to be. So, well, first of all, can I ask you when you say you're not where you're supposed to be? Are you talking physically on this planet or emotionally, spiritually? No, uh, actually, we've uh, we've taken up residence in the Adirondack Mountains uh, partly due to some of the earth changes that we see coming, partly due to some of the uh, societal changes. Uh, these are changes that you mentioned mm-hmm. that have to take place in order for. Or, for humanity to advance, to, um, to to reach a new level of, of know, evolution, perhaps. Indeed. And uh, we, you know, we're at thirteen hundred uh, feet altitude. We're very close to the Aquasasne uh, Mohawk Reservation, by the way. In fact, uh, I have close ties to that reservation, so we uh, we're familiar with uh, some of the um, the elders and, and what their talk concerns with regarding this contact with. Uh, the, and you call it the Anunnaki, uh, however people want to label that. So, uh, you know, we we actually retreated here from Long Island. We were down in Long Island for quite some time. We've also traveled quite extensively over the past uh, couple decades. So uh, this is where we, we, we ended up settling. We have a family here. Uh, we have a community here. And um, it just seemed like a really safe place to haul up for the changes that, that are coming. Now, those same changes are, are ones that, that these two gentlemen on that Skype pack talked about, mm-hmm. uh, that they've spent an enormous amount of money, an enormous amount of time, and there's an, uh, a huge number of people who are involved in this labor. And uh, yeah. I'm, I, I do. You know what I can tell you, brother? Is that they're all up in arms right now because these are the same people that are behind the Georgia Guidestones. They truly had a depopulation agenda going, and it's right there written in stone. Keep humanity under 500 million, I believe it was. Right. Was. Well, they wanted these earth changes to happen with Nibiru and whatnot, and what we did, me and A.R. Borden and the whole team, was through a monkey wrench into their plans, and they're really pissed off. That's why A.R. is no longer with us. Mm-hmm. You know, um... Uh, the changes, the, why I'm saying this is I know, you know, even very, not until 2012, no one knew if these prophesied earth changes. But I can tell you from the highest levels, that mission was successful, which means we're in a new timeline that was not prophesied at all. The prophecies are out the window. We are writing the book as we go along, moment to moment, and I think we're in good hands, you know. Uh, I think it could look scary on the outside, but I think it won't even be that scary because I think people are ready now. And I think we're in good hands, and there's already, you know, really what we're talking about, right, is Earth becoming a galactic society. So it's just obvious. All the systems that are not for the whole, and it's just for a few oil and banking families, well, those systems have to go. They're not pro-evolution. You know what I'm saying? And um, we are going to become a galactic society, and I'm really excited for the future. So... You know, I understand prophecy and where it was saying that we're heading with these earth changes, but I can tell you the Anunnaki did not go through the kind of effort that they just did for mankind to let us die in a pulse shift. That's exactly right. Well, Mike. Hey, Michael, thank you for the call, brother. Peace. Thanks, Jimmy. Uh, thank you, Michael. Have a good night. Uh, back to, yeah, very interesting. And it, it, the uh, the whole... The whole thing about the Georgia Guidestones, for me, is though, how do you pull off something like that unless you don't have a juice card? 
Okay. You got a juice card. <laughs> you know, that's you know the what biggest I mean? juice card. I heard, you know, they're, they're called transhumanists. They're right. people that believe our evolutionary path is to merge with technology. And I heard that, you know, man, I don't want to give any names. One of the biggest names in the world that is behind Microsoft is a part of this group that we're talking, the Georgia Guidestone group, we'll call them from now on. Um, you know, I say, uh, you know, I think if you think that outside technology is the answer, you have no idea about the true technology of the human body and of spirit. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah, 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 yeah. And, and, and to be able to, first off, you got to get the property, right? You have to, and, and none, none of that is free. Uh, you have to design the stones. That doesn't come free. You have to have the stones made. That doesn't come free. You have to transport them. You have to install them and do and all of that. Nobody who's got that kind of cash lying around that, or the pole to get them done. And you know that, what, Jimmy? I got to tell you something because I've never shared this. I talked to A.R. Borden specifically about this, and I said, you know what? I don't think that a depopulation agenda is necessary because it truly is scary when you realize in 1950 it taken all the time we know of to populate this planet to 2.5 billion people that was 1950 right now in 65 years we're at 7 billion yep you see the problem the population grows exponentially but i told ar i said man it seems to me if you just start back away from it and just look at nature in a garden a flower will become the most pollinated possible before the seeds go out into its environment to spread it. It's kind of like that right now. If we got away from war, look at all the money that we've put into these wars that are manufactured in Iraq and Afghanistan specifically. Um, if we even put that into exploring outer space and inner space, I think that humanity could leave this planet and you don't even have to leave, go through a stargate and go to another planet and meet those people and see the mountains there and learn from them and come back whenever you want. That's what we're talking about. Um, it's not necessary. And I think it is natural that we are at this state of population. And if we change our ways, we can work on technology that will let humanity flower off this planet and AR's response startled me. He said, Michael, would it shock you to know that wouldn't be the first time then? Wow. Right? Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's heavy. Yeah. Let's go back to the questions. Uh, this is from Cortana. She says, why mankind? Why humans? What makes us so special? You know, that's a very loaded question because... Uh, isn't everything special? Isn't a deer just beautiful? You know, when I see everything, everything's a miracle when you really start to realize it, you know? Um, we are part of nature. Like anything else, would you say that a deer is ugly? Would you say that uh, a beautiful dog is not special or anything? Why do humans separate themselves from nature? We are beautiful. And you know, this life is beautiful. Some people have made it into a war ground. This could be a playground. It's just up to cho us to choose that. This is from Ryan. Ryan says, what do the Anunnaki look like? Uh, well, we talked about this before. I've ne never met an Anunnaki. Well, that's one time I think I did in their native form, and they were about 20 feet tall, but they were in the astral, and that's a whole other story. But other than that, I've met them through the Nephilim, which is the Anunnaki human hybrid bloodline that's here. And every time that they have communicated to me where they've become physical, and it's not telepathic, and it's not manifesting through my own physical reality, if they're standing in front of me and they're human, they can become faceless. And that's how they let me know that I'm, work, I'm dealing with a person who is not of a normal human bloodline. They'll say, Michael, look at my face and tell me what you see. And they'll become faceless in front of me. Uh, let's go to that 20-footer, though. Uh, what did you see then? Uh, Astral so, or not, I want to know. Uh, that was the first time I met the Anunnaki. <clears throat> and... Um, Afterwards, I was actually having a very strange time with, with everything. Uh, 
like my sanity was kind of slipping. It was a very strange experience. And I laid out in a field just trying to process what had happened. And uh, I kind of felt like I was leaving my body. And it wasn't in a good way. It was kind of strange. And in this time, I, I kind of seen what it did to my mother if I didn't come back into my body. And uh, I'm like, well, I got forever. I'm, I'm willing myself back into my body, kind of like Kill Bill where she wiggled her big toe. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And uh, I came in through all the stars. I remembered it. And I came back into my body, and I willed myself to get up. And um, when I did, the first thing, when I opened my eyes, there was like 20-foot tall beings all around me. And they looked very regal and beautiful, like long flowing robes. And, uh, and I don't, you know, that's what I experienced the first well, time well, I opened. But, uh, uh, two arms, two legs, five oh, yeah. fingers. Looked like they were part of Game of Thrones. <laughs> really? So they had almost like long flowing robes on that looked very ornate, but, you know, like uh, kind of like Game of Thrones stuff, you know? Huh. And so uh, uh, two eyes, nose, mouth, ears? Well, man, I know what this sounds like, but you know the weird stories with Steve I anyhow. I can swear to you one of them, one of them was Steve I. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, I remember him saying to someone else, I didn't know who he was. He was just some guy who won a contest, man. Right. I swear to God. Right. And uh, then what happened is Loki, who you know was the one who kind of took me under his wing anyhow, he got me up. And like I said, I just went through a really traumatic experience after meeting them. And uh, he took me back to the tent and he uh, said, I'm going to wish you some really well beautiful dreams and you know go ahead and get in the tent but don't open it up for anything or anyone that comes to this tent tonight that was an interesting in in, the, in like 1982 i see uh frank zappa it was 82 yeah it had to be 82 i see frank zappa at uh indiana university in bloomington and uh he played two shows and i went to both of them two nights in a row with a friend of mine and uh, and Vi's on guitar. And at that time, I don't even know how, you know, I'd never heard of him. I think Flexible might have come out, but I didn't know uh, who he was in Zappa's band kind of thing. I didn't know who this guitar yeah. player was. But I remember, uh, and I'm sitting in the front, I'm in the middle, and I'm a Zappa head still unto this day. And I said to myself, that dude ain't of this earth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Whoever that guy huh. is, that guy is an alien. I thought he, it's just so funny. It just popped into my head that he, he was just he was not human. And yeah, it's, yeah. it's funny that you say that. It's just it's kind hysterical. of apparent, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Oh man! And then of course yeah. you know he comes out with uh, you know uh, 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 his whole alien uh, connection that he started to unroll out. It just yeah. makes it just it does make you wonder totally. Let's uh, let's head to a break and uh, let's get our last break out of the way. You stay right there, Michael. Uh, cool. I've got a whole pile of questions we got to get in before the end of the night. This, uh, this is, is fun, isn't it? Great. This is fade to black. Day two of our four straight AMA nights right here on fade to black tonight. It's Michael Lee Hill. I'm your host Jimmy Church. More with Michael when we come back right after the short break. Stay right there. Jimmy Church on JimmyChurchRadio.com. Despite popular opinion, reading a book will not make you smarter. But listening to Jimmy Church will. Hi, folks. Ray Sobs here with KGRA to tell you about something very special taking place in February 2016. I'm talking about the Space and Alien Snowfest Ufology Conference taking place at the beautiful ski and snowboard resort city of Big Bear Lake in sunny Southern California. We've got Richard Dolan, Chase Kletsky, Micah Hanks, Jason Martell, Jimmy Church, Linda Moulton Howe, 
Mike Barra, and keynote speaker Stanton Friedman will be presented a Lifetime Achievement Award. George Norrie and his producer Tom Danheiser from Coast to Coast AM Live will be with us all weekend. After the hectic holidays, gift yourself a retreat on top of the world. The first weekend in February 2016 with a one-of-a-kind ufology event featuring some of the top minds in the field. Take advantage and book your lodging early and get your tickets now. And register at Alien Snowfest. Com. I'll be there. Don't miss out. All right, you fader not. Studio Dome has done it once again. A new Studio Dome fader not special. Introducing the Studio Dome Boom Box Bluetooth speaker. It's got a rear firing base film subwoofer and dual 52 millimeter main speakers. You'll never listen to your tablet or cell phone speakers again. Just click on the Studio Dome banner, use the promo code Jimmy, and you'll get the SBB for 49 bucks and free shipping. And get a Buddy 4-port USB charger for free. That's a $19.99 value right there. And they'll throw in a Buddy in the box. It's the best deal on the net anywhere. Just go to JimmyChurchRadio.com, click on the Studio Dome banner, enter the promo code Jimmy. Go back, Lee Tappy. <laughs> It's not a lifestyle we chose. We were born this way. KGRARadio.com This is KJCR at JimmyChurchRadio.com Welcome back to Pay the Black Bespoke Radio for the masses on the Game Changer Network and KGRA The Planet. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. It is day two of our four straight nights of AMAs right here on Fade to Black. Tonight, our guest is Michael Lee Hill. Michael, it's kind of funny. See, the the microphones here still feed the talk back, right? So you can hear it. The audience can't. So Michael's listening to the conversation between Rita and I here. <laughs> she walked in from her studio into here, and she was just all smiles. And she's like, this is the best show ever. And Mike got to hear all of that. And I said to, I said to Rita, you know, Michael can hear us right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I heard was something about Taco Bell. Or yeah, something. no, Taco Truck. We're going to Taco. Oh, because I, I gave you the product placement, Taco <laughs> Bell. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you see, you know, I don't know. Do you guys have taco trucks in uh, in uh, in north uh, no. northeast Ohio? You no, don't. No, that's see, what I know. Of. Yeah, see here that that the best food in Los Angeles, especially the last five ten years, is is taco trucks. Oh, We're talking really? gourmet, real deal. And uh, not to get swing off the AMA, but there are sections here in LA. Where you, uh, it depends on, you know, what night of the week. Well, they'll have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 taco trucks. Well, we call them taco trucks, but they're, you know, they're gourmet uh, trucks. That Sounds have, great. Yeah, that have everything on it. There is one, it's called uh, Grill Em All and Let God Sort Them Out, right? You know, Metallica. And it's <laughs> nothing but grilled cheese sandwiches. There, you know, so it, it's, it's like that. There's a mac and cheese truck. There'll be, uh, uh, there'll be a waffle truck uh, with nothing but waffles. There'll be a waffle taco truck that serves, uh, makes uh, tacos inside of waffles. Whatever, it's it's crazy. So you I'm know, lo- yeah, lobster, shrimp, fish, uh, Philly cheesesteaks, burger, whatever, salads. There'll be a truck with nothing but salad. Another truck with nothing but desserts. You know, so and, and they're all over LA. It's not. Uh, it's in not Cleveland, bro. It's all gyros or gyros, however yeah, you pronounce that. Gyros and, and uh, sausage sandwiches. That's it. I wish they did some tacos. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, sausage sandwich. All right. Uh, so I, I'm looking at these pictures. Everybody's posting a Vi, and I got to tell you, alien, alien. Right. <laughs> 
alien. He probably well, dude, does. I gotta tell you, when I, you know, I shook his hand, it's like his fingers are after on my hand a couple times. <laughs> that dude has the longest fingers of and anyone he, I've ever seen in my life. And like, he's not the? that, and he's not that big of a guy. You know what though? He is an athlete that people have no idea. This is a hidden thing about. People don't know he's a triathlon. I've athlete. heard that. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. That dude's in, you know, that's, you got to be in unbelievable shape to be a triathlon athlete. People don't know that's his, like, alter ego. <laughs> you know, and, and he looks, you know, on stage or whatever, he looks like he's, you know, six foot six and long and lanky. And then you meet him in person and he's not a big guy. You know, that's his aura. Yeah, it's his aura is big. <laughs> he can't become 20 foot, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. Okay, let's get back to it. Do you think, uh, oh, I don't have the name of the question uh, or who sent this question in. Okay. Do you think that there is a so-called extraterrestrial, supernatural, and spiritual beings and that they are all, that they are all related? Yes, why you can't you can't just get away with that <laughs> you know i really do i think you know when you start to understand multi-dimensional aspects of our reality um it's all related right you oh know? that's from um, oh i'm sorry that's from ziggy i i see this right on part ziggy okay yeah what well, you know i was just being a little funny but I, I i absolutely think it's all related and i think it has some things are our own mind projections that we don't understand how powerful our minds are that can produce physical things around us even for you to perceive of something that you think you need to perceive but it's really from you okay and oh no that was from alan i'm out of sequence i've got so many questions here that question was from alan this one is from ziggy ziggy i apologize ziggy says in a parallel universe do loved ones who have passed away live on well for the normal you know, I maybe they're still living over there. I don't know. You know what I mean? But sooner or later, we all go through that cycle. And, you know, I believe in reincarnation. But I believe that there's a point that, you know, according to the Seth material, we all, if you choose this reincarnational cycle or system of learning from the other side, there's only three rules. One, you have to incarnate as a male. One, you have to incarnate as a female. And the other one, you have to incarnate as a mother. So actually, you can go and just do two incarnations when you sign up to experience this 3D life reincarnation system, because you could become male and then a female becomes pregnant and you've fulfilled your obligation. From what I understand, no one ever goes and just incarnates twice here. They incarnate thousands of times because they understand the magnificence of what this system truly is to help any life form that's incarnating here to work through a lot of the dark baggage in this ex accelerated fashion, which is this intelligence acceleration spiritual technology that was invented by the Anunnaki to help humanity. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, that's uh, am amazing. I was just sitting here listening. Uh, yeah. Let's go to Dino. Dino, say hi to Michael. Hi, Michael. I've been listening to you last time and this time. Hi, Jimmy. Uh, I, I want to ask you something. I know that you stand in your truth from the way you speak, uh, mm -hmm. that you really came from a place where you didn't know what was happening, and now... Uh, you know, you believe it. You're a true believer of what you have experienced and what's been taught you. Excuse my, uh, you know, maybe it's, I don't know if it's a logical nature because I do have an intuitive side, maybe not as well developed as some, but in everything that you know, I am confused about, uh, on this program, this is like, you know, graduate school for a lot of people. We get so many speakers that tell us well, there's a negative side to all this. Mm -hmm. Then we have speakers such as yourself who say, well, we, there's a positive thing to this. Good things are coming very soon. Mm -hmm. uh, things have been diverted. So h how can you, uh, wh what can you consider, Michael, to tell us, you know, that this, your way is the way it's going to unfold? I'm, I'm well, confused. I can, I can tell you which, actually, I can tell you my own, what I've learned I can put into one sentence. If you could come narrowed down the truth of the reality of the situation I believe it is you get what you concentrate on there is no other main rule mm -hmm. 
You know what I mean? It, it, yeah. If you want to go dark, it, you know, it's there. And there ain't no way around it. I've never, I just want to bring the positive side to this. I've never said there is some evil people here. I would not want to hang out with Marduk's minions. Right, right. Those are humans that have chosen to abuse their power over others. And even though I understand Marduk's role of reflecting back a negative polarity and being at the top of the New World Order Illuminati pyramid of who these people are truly catering to, I understand Marduk's role. I don't understand humanity even going down that path. I think it's ugly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I totally yeah, agree. Well, I, I, I guess the thing is, is that you, you're not a prophet and... And, I am a prophet. Well, okay, but it could go either <laughs> way. You don't you don't know the future any more than we do, so we have yeah, to create our own future. Yeah, each and every one of us, but yeah, I I do Because there is evil there. And it is a struggle between good and evil, it sounds like whether they're extraterrestrials or spiritual beings, there is a struggle and the end is not certain. But, what but is Dino, evil, though, yeah, exactly. Know? Dino, you struggle with good and evil. We all do. Yes. Okay. All right. Let me get back to the phones uh, here, Dino. I, and uh, thank you for the phone call, brother. Great question. Right. Thanks for yeah. thanks for talking. Absolutely. Let's uh, let's try to get a couple more in. And I've I've still got another twenty questions here that have been sent in. I've got to get to those too. Les, say hi to Michael. Hi, Michael. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing fantastic, man. Thanks for calling in. Oh, thank you for being here. Uh, I guess first what I wanted to say is thank you for explaining the An Anunnaki. I'd never heard the whole story before, so I wanted to say thank you for that. Oh, uh, man. Thank you for well, coming on last time. Thank you. I, I just feel like I'm passing it along. Now you pass it along, and, you know, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Les. Hey, really quick, Les. Uh, let's, uh, what's your question, brother? Okay. Well, since you are part of Inky, or connected to him, has he used your connection to talk to others like Marta talk to you? And yes, when that's he who I does, met. do you have control? Uh, yeah, I, to me, it doesn't feel anything. It's like music, though. You know, Jimmy can tell you, being a musician, the most when I'm in tune playing music is when I'm out of the way. I'm just mm -hmm, the instrument mm -hmm. for whatever is coming through me. That's right. And and in the same way, you know, anything. Tonight, sometimes, the best things are when I'm not behind the steering wheel. There's another intelligence that can use me as a vessel, and I hope I'm a good vessel. That's all any one of us. You know, I think, you know, it's saying, I, not that it's getting back to the last caller, but it is. I think the point is we all are prophets. The point is we all have a connection with the creator. You don't need religion. The whole point is we all become prophets and have your own personal communication with all that is. There you go, Les. Thank you very much, Michael. <laughs> have a great night, you guys. Uh, hey, say, for taking my call. say happy birthday to your mom for me. I will. Thanks, Jimmy. You got it, Les. Uh, let's get back to these questions here. Let's see. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, is 432, I know we've kind of danced on this a few times tonight, but... That's important. Yeah, That's but cool. for somebody that doesn't understand fully, uh, this is a great question. Is 432 an expression of vibrations per second wanting to tune down? I want to tune down. I'm not sure where it's going to be. Um, yeah, you know, when, you know, for a non-musician, this is important because I keep forgetting, you know, not everyone's going to know what a hertz is. Exactly. Uh, a hertz is a scientific term of, of measuring how many, like everyone knows, sound is a wave, you know? So how many, a wave has a peak, you know? Even think of a wave in water, you know? There's a peak and a valley and a peak and a valley. Well, one hertz is how many peaks and valleys are within one second. It's that simple. So one hertz has one little mountain, one wave between that you go to... 50 hertz, you're going to have 50 undulations of 50 little mountains in that waveform. And it's that simple, you know. Um, it is a scientific way, a term of measuring how many cycles per wave is within one second. And that's it. It's really that simple. Yeah. And then it, 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 you really opened up. I, I didn't know that, uh, that 440 is not even. 
I did right? not. I did not know that because you think of four forty, just the number itself. Oh, it's divided by two. It's there. You know that that mm-hmm. it would be even, and it's not. And it's actually have, the most disharmonious frequency right. that could even be chosen. Man, and using the same scientific cymatic scientific technology run 440 through it there's no geometry at all it looks like a puddle back it off eight cents the 432 p- perfect sacred geometry oh, is man, formed. you have just messed with me young man okay <laughs> let's let's go to this is from claudia and she says i read that louis armstrong's wonderful world and also john lennon's imagine were both at 432 and that's why they're both so loved. Have you ever heard of this? Yes, and it's true. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, if well, let me explain you to the to- audience. That, you know, if people go, well, so what? What is the difference between going from 440 and 432? Say you just have an acoustic guitar, and you're not plugged into anything. There's no stereo systems or computers or I song or whatever it is it's no, just, just an acoustic air. guitar just air right and all you do is instead of being tuned to your a being 440 if you just tune it down eight cents you'll gain one third decibel level because think about this at 440 there's no geometry being formed in the signal but 432 it's perfect there's more information in the signal it's going to vibrate even more like there's more overtones like when i recorded my sample for Cymoscope um, to image an electric rock guitar that had been tuned properly at 432. Then they did the uh, scientific imaging of this, and it's kind of becoming historic now. You're, the listeners can go to Cymoscope.com, go to the videos, and you can go to Music Made Visible, and this is not an image that's being created by Photoshop or any computer program. People need to understand that image is being created in water. The first time that I saw that, I couldn't believe what I was looking at. In fact, I didn't believe it, Michael. No one can, Jimmy. Right. The actual inventors of that technology, they told me, you know what? We've used this technology to image everything. We've made a whole dolphin language of being able to take yes, their, yes. you know, but they had never imaged an electric rock guitar. They'd never seen the kind of complexity and dimensionality that was unfurled from being tuned to 432 and playing through a Joe Satriani amplifier. <laughs> and it, how full, how, how full it was imaged, you know, and, and you look at 440 and it, it, it looks, you know what? It looks like a bad painting. It looks like crap. And you go yeah. to 432, and it is full. I don't know how else to explain it because it's visual. It's beautiful. It looks yeah. like H.R. Geiger artwork. You it, know? Right, 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 right. It does look <laughs> like HR. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. All right, let's uh, let's see. Where am I at here? With uh, with all uh, – this is from Mark. With all young humankind has done, what would you say in our is our defense to the alien race? Music, man. I think, you know what? Everyone says that we've done such a horrible job. I've heard if extraterrestrials were flying by, which they do, and they tuned in and they heard Jimi Hendrix. They'd be cool with it. Yeah, they'd be very cool with it. There's a lot of beauty that mankind can produce. And, you know, that's one of the things when this council meeting happened with the Anunnaki. I said, you know, all these things that you're saying about mankind are judging mankind under the thumb of the new world order. I don't think it's fair. You know what I mean? How about judging mankind when that thumb has been removed and being forced into a slavery economic system is removed and let people flourish in their creativity? Then let's judge mankind. Deuce Guy just said, I wasn't going to ask this, but I can't help it. Is there some nefarious agenda behind music at 440? <laughs> well, yes. That's, yeah, that's a Nazi great. scientist yeah. put us into 440. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's more, no, I can't say anymore. The question is, how do we tell the world that we need to rechange our musical standard to 432? You know, I'm doing it anyhow. I don't need their permission. Maybe right. that's the answer. Everyone tune your instruments to 432. I know you're harmonica and piano players. It's not going to be easy, but we need to do it. Uh, what, what does it do, Michael, because I've never done it, um, what does it do 
to the wood resonance and the feeling of the wood, not only in an electric, but in an acoustic, does it just vibrate? Yeah, there's more vibrations from the sound. Like I said, picture if tuned in 440, if you have a decibel meter in front of you and say you're at, uh, I don't know, 50 decibels. And then you tune down to 432, and now you're at about 75, 80 decibels. Shut up. Yeah, man. It's, there's more information in the signal. It's vibrating this physical medium. We're water. It's everything. What about, what, air. What, what about cats like, like Jeff Beck? I mean, have they picked up on this? Is he tuning down to 432? Maybe, but not too many people at this point, man. Yeah, I guess that's why I'm here. <laughs> could, you, could you imagine um, the, the sweetness of some of Prince, those? Prince has told people to tune to 432, and so did recently. People can uh, Google, what's the dude's name? Andrew Bocelli? Yeah, yeah Andre, like Andre, Andre Bocelli, yeah. That's a, do his name with 432, and you'll just realize that he's changed all his music over to 432 because these the acoustic guitar players that he has opened his shows turned him on to the 432 subject. Now he's changed his tuning to be in this most harmonious frequencies. And uh, so it's spreading. And I think doing shows like we're doing right now, but man, I got to bring up a controversial subject. I hate the, you know, a lot of people think you can go to a computer program and just take a song that was originally recorded in 440 and put it into a computer and knock it down eight cents. It's not the same thing as music being recorded. That's right. In 432. It, it can't be. Yeah, it's better. I, you know, so that's why I'm a little hesitant because I'm like, at least they're thinking about 432. If someone's taking the time to do that, I'm all for it because their mind is on a different subject matter. And I think it's important. And, uh, you know, the same thing with, like, global warming or whatever. I'm like, you know what? I think we should be better caretakers, period. So I'm not going to even vote an opinion other than we should be better caretakers of our environment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We shouldn't be trying to fix it. We shouldn't, <laughs> you know, it should be the opposite. Yeah. yeah. Right, right. Uh, let's see here. we got enough time to get a couple more in. I'm going to try to get this in. Can Michael elaborate on the importance of love as highest importance in our transformation and the best trait that we have? And that's from Nancy. Yes, it's self-evolution. If we've talked about that thoughts have an electromagnetic reality, a waveform. Well, what you need to realize is, first of all, even now provable through cymatics, lower frequencies have lower geometry. When you go up to higher frequencies, sometimes there's actually a threshold. And when you meet that, your cymatic image will change from two dimensions to three and so on and so forth. But the lower you are, the more simple your geometry. That's why at 27 hertz, you get a perfect seven-pointed star. It's actually simpler geometry. But so... Um, Okay, let's stop there. I've got more questions, so let's get these right in. This is from Lisa. Mike, do you know people who slide across parallel universes and realities? I think I do. That's from Lisa. Right, right. I know a few of my friends, and I've experienced some really strange things myself. So, uh, I, you know, we're all sliding in between these parallel universes moment to moment almost. So, Yes. Okay, I'm looking at a picture of uh, Adrian Smith from uh, Iron Maiden. You know, he, <laughs> he, that dropped D guy. George Stevens says, what is the geometry of the plate that you send with the cymatics or that you use with the cymatics? There's not. Uh, you know what? For the listeners to really understand, just go to YouTube and type in cymatics, Ted. And you'll find a TED Talk that was done for MIT um, by the creators of the Cymoscope technology. And um, there's no, like, a, the plate was used in the 1800s because what they found is they'd just take a metal plate and then they would s sprinkle sand on it. And then they would have a bow and they, it, that plate would be tuned to 
resonate at a certain frequency. And what they found out was they watched the sand dance and certain geometry would form, and it wasn't random. Every time they heard a, hit a specific frequency, a specific geometry is formed. Well, that technology now has evolved to the point where they don't use a metal plate anymore at all. It's a big vat of water, and it's suspended within three metal, like a tripod, so there's no vibration getting into that water at all, but a waveform generator that's hooked up to that to pump frequency through that liquid media. Um, and But not only can it do a frequency, like what they did in my case is they just have a stereo into it. They can image anything, whether it's a dolphin sound or if you want to have your baby's first uh, baby sounds, you know, immortalized into its cymatic form. You can do that and get a print. Well, I hired them to uh, do my guitar. Thank and you so much, Michael. Absolutely fascinating show tonight, and you went to the bloody end. Thank you hmm. so much. And uh, did you have a great time? Heck yeah, man. It's You know, it, it always flies by, doesn't it? It's it, like we're in a time war because, <laughs> man, you know, I never talked this long. <laughs> well, you know, and, and, and all of these questions, I think, save for one tonight, came from our audience. And, and that's what's most important. And we have a very smart audience. And, and I know yes, that indeed. they're totally thankful and really appreciated you uh, taking the time to hang out with them tonight. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you for everyone uh, tuning in. Now, really quick, uh, uh, MichaelLeeHill.net is your website. And what is the best way to communicate with you? Well, that's it. You know, go to the contact section of MichaelLeeHill.net. That'll go right through to my email. Or, uh, you know, I'd say fastly because I'm really quickly approaching 5,000 friends. And me and Dan were talking about that. Like, it's funny. Like, no, you can't have any more friends, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but i uh, I'm nearing that point of not being able to allow any more friends, and I'll have to decide and get in uh, some other page or something. But right, right. Well, those are the two ways. On YouTube, it's Frozen Hill. That's where you can see my videos. Thank you so much, brother. Be safe thank out you, there. Man. Go, go, go sling on that guitar tonight. Ha, peace. I'll talk to you. Michael Lee Hill, night two of our AMAs. Thank you, everybody, for the questions. This audience is the absolute best. Thank you for the phone calls. I tried to get them all in. I didn't get them all in, but I tried. I tried to get all of the questions in, and there might have been a couple of stragglers, but I did my absolute best. Thank you for Michael to come in and, 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 and spend his time and hang out with us and absolutely field every question that was thrown at him. And it was just, oh, man. I got to tell you, I caught myself tonight sitting here looking at the studio floor between my legs, uh, you know, down at my feet, listening to what he had to say. And that for me is, I, I do it kind of like every, but tonight I was just like you. I was listening and I want to thank everybody for that. Absolutely an unbelievable show. Tomorrow night, Leo Zagami is going to be here and Leo is going to be live from Rome, Italy. I have his book and I'm going to pull it up right here. It's, it, I've been reading it every single day. Confessions of an Illuminati. You've got to go and get this book. You can get it from CCC uh, Publishing. You can go to their website and and, and check it out. This book, uh, i got to look at the studio clock here. I don't want to run out of time. This book is literally, uh, it's 400 pages long with really small type. It is jam-packed, illustrations, everything else. It is one of the most fascinating reads, and I and I read a lot. Confessions of an Illuminati. Tomorrow night is your opportunity to speak with an Illuminati. And this is Fade to Black. Thank you, Michael Lee Hill. AMA week all week long. Fade to Black's executive producer is Rita Kamarian. Show is produced by Hilton J. Paul, Mark D. Kovar, LJ3, Renee, Mark Dunbar, and Jonas. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you, Dennis, for clogging up the F2BQ. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. Fady by Dale, Webmasters, Drew the Geek, Music, Doug Aldrich, Intro, Spaceboy, spaceboymusic.com. 
Faded Black is produced by KJCR for the Game Changer Network. Syndication is KGRA The Planet. Tomorrow night, Leo Zagami. This broadcast is owned and copyrighted 2015 by Faded Black and the Game Changer Network. It cannot be rebroadcast, downloaded, copied, or used anywhere in the known universe without written permission from Fade to Black or the Game Changer Network. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Follow us on Twitter at JChurchRadio. I want everybody to be safe. Go Beckley Tepe. Tepe.